It's just Welcome, and it's a beautiful morning here after the long holiday. So I'm sure some of you have forgotten that you have to go back to work. But guys, it's <laughs> Tuesday, and you have to wake up and make your way to work, even though it's very tiring. But I'm sure you've rested enough, and God has given you another day to be a great citizen of our motherland. So go out mm. there, be productive. And of course, we are here, usual squad, but AJ is joining us. <laughs> of course, party. yeah. I mean, I mean after his holiday, you, you for him to be back. very excited. I am. AJ <laughs> looks <laughs> AJ looks like a banker, no, like a bank yeah. manager who's been posted serious. like for the rural yeah, yeah. bank to, you know, so he looks, <laughs> this is welcome, bank welcome, to work. like <laughs> to a commercial <laughs> bank. This so. is TV bullying, not <laughs> online bullying. Say again. <laughs> TV bullying, not but online yeah, bullying. So he has to be punished for that. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. Right is there to no, punish no, I, I, I thought he looked like a bank robber. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, you see. I look like a what? A bank robber. Not a banker. Is he, is he, is he, he told me he so was a banker. <laughs> <laughs> not knowing bank robber. That money, is money, just money, a guys. Good morning. <laughs> and I uh, trust you're right. fine. It's Tuesday yeah. already. So mm. we're beginning a full week of work. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, yeah. if you had so much to drink and eat, <laughs> Amma said you have to wake up now. So we are just reminding you that Edonedu. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. You know, you know some people know Edonedu, but they refuse to believe. They are in denial. But yeah. we're helping them. We're praying for you. Yeah. It's not easy. We, yeah. we appreciate that. We're encouraging but time, you. Guys, this morning, we were at work. Yeah. So at least we're this morning, a lot of companies people. are going to get excuses. Yep. My place flooded. Yep. My car broke down. Oh, really? Oh, really? My child. You were in their by force. I see. Oh, I left my hair on. to excuse duties. You know, it's a very interesting thing when... Majority of people walk into the doctor's, you know, office expecting an excuse duty for the most trivial issues. Mm. And I mean, who people don't who understand. Trivial? Who determines yeah. We trivial? do, medically. I, That's why I, we've I, been I, to I school see. to understand what it is. I mean, someone can tell you that, oh, my leg got swollen last two weeks, but I didn't <laughs> go to the hospital. But now I've come. <laughs> so and I want excuse duty for those two weeks I wasn't. <laughs> exactly. But, but and I mean, no, how does that even work? The pain, the pain has increased. Doctors are wicked. Oh, please. It's 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 crazy. Crazy. Whatever it is, people just don't understand the practice. That's why they say what you they don't say. Know how to but give. when the, uh, so wait, like, the question is: we be, the question because Ghanaians abuse when we even give because you don't okay, understand okay, what okay, goes now, into no, it. If we, if we take this matter uh, seriously, mm. if if the patient feels uh, inability to work, right. how is a doctor able to know that he or she can work? Obviously, you would have to go through screening. You have to do certain labs based mm. on the symptoms you present with. I would be thinking a particular way. You'd also have certain things to show. And so if we go through the test, and indeed it's proven, because these are things that are legal. Excuse duties are not just papers you write. Yes, but... They are backed by but then law. I, I and so can't. medically, I have the to test, prove okay, so that what you say it is, is okay. real. But but the, the test you, you claim mm. uh, is okay. Everything is mm. fine by your test. Mm. But... Within me, psychologically, I don't exactly. feel it. Exactly, and so psychologically, so that moves from a different that? realm from being the physical, and so mm. would refer you to a clinical psychologist. Can he also if give an assessment? Oh, yes, they are doctors. <laughs> can so spiritualists can. also give a <laughs> 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 Definitely <laughs> not, but they do all the time. But, <laughs> so, but, yeah. but it's just up to anyway, understanding it, it, it how is interesting. it works. Uh, I think it's a huge issue it that is. can yeah. be looked at. It but, is. Uh, I mean, I'm doctors wondering. are willing, but the problem is we abuse it. Let's be real. You, know, you have people who bring their relatives and they travel, and just because they've come and spent extra days, they come to you asking for these kind of favors. And you see, see, it cripples the system. And so yeah. now, as a doctor, I'll be very, you know, diff it will be difficult for me to be lenient mm. towards the real, even the real person mm. because of the abuse. You, you know, what we all work in that. What must I say, what, what, really, what must I say really, when I come to you? Uh, uh, it's like an hand uh, robber asking, what should I say to get free? <laughs> 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 no, 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 it's all right. It's more like, imagine a stage where somebody comes to sit in front of you, mm. is shivering, all of that, feigning sickness. So probably and really then you just pick the term that check it, everything yeah, is fine, yeah, check everything. Yeah. And the, okay, so you're now fine. Run all so, you, so you can go home, nothing is wrong with you. But that's ah, shivering. You see, but, but the interesting thing are, oh, is, exactly, but when you communicate well, that's where communication comes. But if a person comes. operates a, a machine mm. and is shivering, how do you ask him? <laughs> <her> to <laughs> Shivering. Yes. Right, like a word Yes, uh, what's so you wear cardi mini vibrators. Go and operate the machine. People, let's take them. <laughs> 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 All right. Sign off for the news. <laughs>
A good morning to you. Now residents of Wei Jagbawe and adjoining communities are terrified following warnings that an air tremor which hit the community two weeks ago was a sign of an imminent earthquake. While the Ghana Geological Survey Authority is busy analyzing data, some residents are considering relocating from the affected communities. On March 24, three earth tremors hit part of Weja, Gbawe, McCarthy Hill and the Nyenano Enclave. The first two happened at 3.9 a.m., followed by another at 3.41 a.m., with the third occurring at 11.31 a.m. the same day. Following the earth tremors, the Ghana Geological Survey Authority, GGSA, has warned the fault zones are still active and it is possible that an earthquake could occur at any time. The mountainous areas are said to be prone to earthquakes. 38-year-old Enima Esiama lives on the peak of the Weja mountain. We were watching television and I felt the earth shook. So I told my children but they didn't believe me until a certain man came here to confirm. I hear the area is prone to earthquakes so I will leave one day. Around uh, midnight. Uh, I was asleep when I heard a very heavy thud, as if something heavy, a heavy metal has been dropped. And I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure it was an F tremor. But it happened for the second time, and uh, I heard the, the windows shaking and the roof, and I noticed it was an F tremor. Last two weeks' earth tremor could not be the first time residents are experiencing this. Esther Deku, a resident, said they have been warned on what to do immediately. An earthquake struck. We are surrounded by mountains all over. And because of this, anytime there is an earthquake, they advise us to get out into the open space on the park. Ibrahim Abubakar is also contemplating moving his family out. The way they Earthquake, it shoot like a, a bomb, boop, 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 like something. Even my children and my wife all are running away. Mm, what about me too? Ghana's severest earthquake was on June 22, 1939, with a magnitude of 6.4. Bowie was in the news again 28 years ago with two earthquakes, the first measuring 3.1 in magnitude and 10 kilometers in depth occurring at 11.43 a.m. on April 14, 1990, 4.2 kilometers from the town, while the second was measured at 2.7 in magnitude and 10 kilometers in depth, occurred at 1.34 a.m. on February 12, 1990, 1 1.2 kilometers from the community. Now, the chief executive officer of the Millennium Development Authority, MIDA, has rejected suggestions that the implemented ECG tariff reduction will affect the final stages of the ECG concession. The ECG from April 1 is expected to implement a 10 and 30 percent reduction in tariffs as directed by the PRC. He spoke to Grace Asari. I don't doubt the fact that they were able to factor in the lower tariffs into their thinking. That is where we want to go. And therefore, you come to a country, you meet a policy, PURC brought it in, they, 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 they wins a little bit. I mean, obviously you will win. But at the end of the day, you still would want to, to see how you can reduce cost, improve the operations of ECG, and even probably bring tariffs down first, further. So it's a process that we've embarked on. Initially, you say, oh, the foreigner is coming. Why have you reduced your tariff? It will make him. Why are you, why are you pleading for him? Why are you not saying Ghanaians are going to benefit? But why is everybody looking at the negative side of something that is done for the common good? I mean, we're doing this for Ghana. The government and his, and, 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 and his team have sat together and said, tariffs must go down. Why is agriculture's tariff maybe lower than ours? Why? So therefore, we want to measure ourselves. We are competitive. To be competitive, tariffs must go down. 
And now the Association of Ghana, AGI, has commended government for being bold in reducing the electricity tariffs across industry. Vice President of AGI, Humphrey Ayim Dakin, noted the direction by government is positive and a boost to the country's attempts to industrialize. In 2017, the Association of Ghana Industries Business Barometer Report called the high cost of electricity as a major impediment to the growth of businesses. AGI noted the reduction in electricity tariffs will go a long way in reducing cost of producing. This, the vice president of the association indicated, is a good start in making Ghanaian industries competitive. That is another major boost in the sector of industrialization. Our cost item in the production, it's utility and power has been very significant in this issue. We all know the issue of the era of doom so until date. So it's quite exciting to see government being very bold to reduce um, utility pricing to the set level that it has done. Humphrey Ayim Dake indicated the imbalance in utility tariffs need to be addressed. He suggested the removal of all subsidies on residential consumption being borne by industry in subsequent tariff adjustment. The imbalance, it's a matter of time. You've got to give government a little space. Uh, such issues are not done overnight. And therefore, the direction of government is positive, and the Association of Ghana and members of industry and the business community welcome the initiative of government in reducing the utility tariffs. Now, the Jubilee FPSO Kwame Nkrumah is expected to be shut down in May this year for a general routine maintenance exercise. Deputy Minister of Energy and Petroleum Dr. Mahmoud Amin Adam, in a briefing after a working visit on the FPSO, informed journalists the temporary shutdown of the oil and gas production vessel is to ensure a long-term solution to the frequent breakdown of the Tourette's. Dr. Amin assured that the impact of the shutdown will be minimized since Ghana Gas is now in full operation to receive about 60 million standard cubic feet of gas every day for the 10 fills. There has already been one shutdown which lasted three weeks between February and March this year. Now the police at Sege have arrested six persons, including two females, who have been terrorized in residents in the Adan West District. Items retrieved include two motorbikes, washing powder, desktop computers and crates of eggs. According to the police, the suspects used their female colleagues as baits to lure their prey into alleged amorous relationship and eventually rob them of their possession. The Adan West District Police Commander, ASP George Abwaje, said the ringleader and notorious criminal, Evans Ediama, known as Aka, is connected to several criminal cases reported to the station and has over the years terrorized residents. Anytime that he, he does his operation, it's hardly before we can get him. I had a tip off that he's hiding out in a certain community called Koledo. So this morning around 4.30, I organized my men and we moved to the area and we were able to get him. The district chief executive of Adan West, Ajote Lawe Akrofi, called on residents to assist the police to fight crime. These people operate in their various houses. The landlords know them. Because if you are a landlord and you think you do not know them, they come to rent a room from you. One person comes to rent a room. Before you are aware, about seven people are in that room. That is a recipe for disaster. That is something that should warn you that these people are criminals. Now, the Bokunaba, the overlord of the Boko traditional area, has called on government to urgently declare the Boko conflict as ended. He was speaking at the Zekula Festival. Zekula literally means togetherness. It is an annual homecoming for the entire Bisa-speaking people, both in Ghana and outside. The festival aims at bringing all Bisas together to promote their educational, cultural and social standards. Bisa people are mainly farmers who cultivate large quantities of granites. 
their produce form about 70% of Ghana's granite exports. In a speech read by a spokesman on behalf of the Bokunaba, he congratulated the Bisa community in the Upper East region for promoting peace and harmony in their traditional area. The current peace appears to be holding thanks to the vigilance of the security services and the understanding of our people that violence cannot be used to achieve parochial interests. Violence breeds more violence and spreads unnecessary hatred rather than love among our people. Information Minister Dr. Mustafa Abdul Hamid, who is also a son of the region in Ebisa, assured the people of government's preparedness to support them in all their endeavors, especially in education. You will be giving seedlings and fertilizer and other farm inputs at half the price. Please take part in the household registry that is going on now. We need to register people. It is not for any purpose, but to identify who are the poorest and vulnerable people within our communities so that if there is any government help, we too can benefit from it. The National Chairman of Bisa Association, Seydou Ayuba, called for more infrastructure development in the area. He also appealed for the development of tourist sites in the area. Different cultural troops performed at the festival, which had a theme, sustaining our cultural heritage for peace and development. <laughs> But that's it for the news this morning. New Day returns after this break. Well, the newspapers are ready. We'll start off with headlines now. Let's start with Ghanaian Times. The president's Easter message. He says, brighter future ahead of us. Also, Winnie Mandela dies at an age of 81. Then bust workers speak out. Flags attack a Sunafu South MP's residence. And then finally, Flagstaff House has not been scrapped. That's coming from Eugene Ahin. Well, interesting there. But of course, Wasi also starts yeah. today. And we'd like to say yes, all the best to our students out there. Go make us proud. You've done it. I mean, you've been in school for three years. Certainly, you've acquired a lot of knowledge to be able to do your best. So go there. No uh, cheating, no, no teaching, teaching, no, no teaching. chirping, no talking, no chatting. No, no Ibima yep. and all of that. But, <laughs> I, but I think that you see, then it comes back to the same conversation. What we did them well. Um, there are some who have been disadvantaged, yes. not because they wanted to hmm. uh, fail or wanted to not to learn, but, system. but the system itself disadvantaged yeah. them. And books, libraries, science resource <laughs> center, you know, even access, contact hours, mm -hmm. teachers going on strike, making them lose the time. Mm. Sometimes there's light off, they can't have their prep. Mm -hmm. All those factors come to play. I wish that the wire could sometimes make some considerations mm. on their behalf, <laughs> okay. but it doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> and you see, we will always talk about the fact that education is important, and we think that, well, education will solve all our problems. Mm -hmm. But how much commitment have we put mm -hmm. there Today. in terms of uh, feeding our education. Yeah. And that's a big problem. Look, yes. now they're going to write the exam mm -hmm. and everybody's saying, we wish you well, we know we have a... But truthfully, mm -hmm. truthfully, even schools in the greater Accra region mm -hmm. have their own set of challenges. Mm -hmm. So now, cross, cross Accra and get into the hinterlands mm -hmm. and you will you'll weep. Yeah. It's not their fault. At all. We need to pay yeah. attention. Yeah. Good morning mm -hmm. to you, uh, Dr. Matthew Puku Prempe, Minister for Education. Mm -hmm. This is my idea, aside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But right. anyway, let's see. Winnie um, Mandela also died yeah, at 81. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 her husband, um, her ex-husband, mm. and then now. I think she's she's contributed a great deal she to um, South the South African mm. uh, uh, fight against apartheid mm. and all that. She was in the thick of uh, the whole process. Yeah, I think at uh, the point she was even the the, the leader of the ANC's uh, <laughs> Women's League. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think she's done a lot. Yeah. Um, Sometimes when people pass on at 80, I am tempted to um, well, the whole be party happy. For them. Yeah. yeah, because I don't we know what again you want to yeah. be doing here uh, after, after 80. <laughs> uh, you would have done almost everything. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is a time to go and rest. Mm -hmm. So when you hear uh, such um, news, you just want to say, well, thanks to God for mm -hmm. having given us such a woman and right. she's now time to depart. Yeah. I'm sure uh, South Africans will give her that befitting right. uh, uh, 
uh, send off and mm. uh, a good reminder that at least uh, women also can do it mm. just as Absolutely. she did for you, you know a lot of people didn't think that she was that old that old mm. yeah 81 mm -hmm. many thought that was well, she'd be around 60s or right. kind of thing but but she's paid her dues i mean yeah, I, she has i mean yeah. if you read the history of south africa for example when mandela and malema and all those uh, tambo were in prison mm -hmm. she was the one yeah. leading the charge exactly. and mm. still getting the people on the Raising abuses the she had and and i think that she's done very well yeah. if we had you know 10 20 of of her kind mm. in africa not just people who will talk but people Fine. who would actually uh, you know move into action when push comes to shove i think that we will move forward we've mm -hmm. had a lot of talkers women talkers now right. doing seminars and conferences mm -hmm. and paperwork we want to see the women yeah, as well get their hands dirty like mm. the men do mm. as well. Mm. But make sure you rest in mm. peace. But yes. there is a story about uh, Mr. Junahin trying mm -hmm. to find <laughs> an excuse for the uh, change <laughs> of the flag <laughs> staff. Mm. I mean, well, I don't know, but I, for me, I think that it, it, it was needless. Mm. I mean, this excuse that the flag staff house sits in the Jubilee house and, who, and so um, it will remain a tourist center mm. or a tourist thing for, I mean, where is this? It, it yeah. Really, yeah. Uh, I don't know what it means, but it is needless. Mm. Look, if indeed uh, whoever took the decision to do this was that open and frank, why was it not the change done openly? We all got up one morning and it, it's been done as mm. early as 6, 5.30 mm -hmm. it was being done. Okay, why do you hide to do it exactly. if, if there is nothing to, to, to be worried about? <laughs> I think we must get serious in this country. Mm -hmm. There are so many things we, we should be doing mm -hmm. and not be moving around and toying with people's I like people's the introduction life. Brian yeah. gave, yeah. you know, the excuse. Yeah, and I mean, that is what it really that. is. Whether for me, the most important thing was the fact that after all this discussion, I think we should come down with laws mm. that limit who when and how you can change the names of these monuments. Mm. Because for how long? Like, I mean, the well, question was Well, the president used an executive instrument to change. It says the last time did. the name was changed, there was nothing of the sort. But does, it, does it matter? <laughs> exactly. That's because what I'm saying. No, but he <laughs> used the executive instrument. Yeah. Does that bring finality to the changing of the name? Because, NDC because said, another president NDC will come NDC in says, and he has that same in fact, executive instrument. On the day it was changed, NDC said yeah. the use of Jubilee House mm. is called terminus with the presidency of, of Donado. Right. As and soon so as they get an goes, NDC president, yeah. they, will they will change it. See, and and so that's where my worry is. That it will it cost us money. Yeah. Yeah. It does cost Look, us money. And letterheads, mm -hmm. uh, call cards. Everything. Everything. Just those, even, and I mean, why would you change house when it's already there? Couldn't they have just added the jubilee? But let's even move the from all the funny, the whatever. Size. Let's move away <laughs> from that. But my problem is, Moving forward, if we don't have any law, then we come and we toy with these things. Supposing someone traveled last two, let's say, two years ago, mm. they left Ghana knowing that this particular building was a flagstaff house. They come back a few years down the line, it's changed to Jubilee House. Did it change anything? Did it yeah, change the it fact that it's the yeah. seat of president? Like, what mm. are we just playing around or we just want to have fun? Because at the end of the day, I agree when MPP will particularly want to hold on to a special name because it was during President Kufour's time that this agreement was entered. But beyond that, really, let's move away from MPP, NDC. The, what, Did changing the, the, the name point, change anything? The that point that is really that is the question what, we should be asking. What, 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 what does it do to our development? Nothing. What does it bring? Look, <laughs> okay, so uh, <laughs> was it Nkrumah who actually constructed the Kwame Nkrumah Circle? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now when the new uh, interchange was done, right. the original statue and the fountain is there. Mm. Okay, mm. is there, it's mm. been preserved. Mm. That's, so it's that, been remade, but yeah. then the concept has been preserved. Right. Yeah. So then do we say that, okay, <laughs> that one was called Kwame Nkrumah Circle, so the, the, the new interchange but should have a, a different name? Mm. Okay, is that the, mm. the argument, uh, uh, Mr. Well, well, the, the, argument, the argument I've heard is that, well, because this was constructed at the time Ghana turned 50. Mm. No. Uh, it, you know, that, that's but the But the interchange argument. was constructed in, in a certain period no, but of time. I, but I, but, uh, uh, but Eugene's I'm, argument is that the original flag so house is there. in there, so it will remain the flag but, well, but So but I'm but asking well, maybe you that... Well, maybe to come in. They, to they, come they, yeah, but he speaks but for the well, president. He speaks for president. The yeah, Nkroma interchange, no, okay? The original Nkroma <laughs> roundabout, yeah. exactly. where the fountain mm -hmm. and the statue is there. Mm -hmm. yeah. A new interchange has been built. Mm -hmm. uh, do, uh, then do we argue, or based on his argument, is that, okay, 
That one is Kwame Nkrumah Circle, right. but the interchange has a different name. Different name. No. Job 600 was there long mm -hmm. ago. Yeah. Now, uh, some years back, we put up a new edifice. Do yeah. we say that, okay, uh, the original Job 600 is there. The new one that we have built, we're going to rename mm. it. No. What? what it, 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 doesn't, it, look, it doesn't add up. And to say that, look, uh, Dr. Nkrumah's oh. first residence is being preserved, and so then it doesn't change. I mean, on the outside, if, if I don't get to hear this explanation, on the outside, what I read is Jubilee House. It, it, it and really, that's, and to, that's to the extent it. that every communication that comes from government plus all the meets the press and mm. everything else will reference Jubilee House, mm. how would I know that the place is Flagstaff House? Yeah. Well, anyway, how, how would I know? Let's move on. So, Let's not join so them then, their so then, so then, we know that the security people who guard the mm -hmm. Flagstaff or the Jubilee House, as it's now called, live opposite it. Mm -hmm. Okay, the quarters there. Is that also going to be called what the Jubilee House quarters? No. What is it going to call? It well, change. maybe when there's a new um, structures, it looks quite old. Uh, sometimes when you go, there's quite scary. You say it's uh, scary. Uh, parts are it is falling. breaking <laughs> apart. So maybe <laughs> when, when one day we have some money to put <laughs> up new structures, we'll we might it. rename it and then as what Diamond House. Ah, who knows? Yeah, maybe oh. and leave the old structure Such as tourist day. attraction. Oh, you can't leave it. But, but there's no, no but space. But they flip Flagstaff House in yeah. the place. People, let's okay. do uh, let's another on. headline. So, touch with the finder. It says, the U.S. military deal, what we know so far, that allays fears. But an injection death toll rises to four. Ghana Health Service says, health worker was operating illegally. Then, both staff unions back MD's reforms. Also, armed robber strike at Oyarefa. And then, finally, um, enforce sanitation bylaws to ensure a clean Accra. That's coming from Palmer Bako. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, 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 I shudder when I, when I hear public officials who are supposed to, um, to find solutions to our to problems uh, tell us rather what, the problems, what are. the problems are. So if the man there was operating illegally, mm -hmm. it, what is Ghana Health Service suggesting that I, 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 me, Bryce sitting here, what am I supposed to do? How would you I how can go there and up, uproot the man? No, but you see, no, right? The they, man, they how do you even know? How do you even know that this man is operating illegally? That's For how the point. Long has a person the, uh, been so operating is illegally? Is there no uh, mm. monitoring? There's no supervision that somebody, mm. while well, a person can can operate illegally, mm. at a health center mm. that is endorsed, regulated, controlled, monitored by the Ghana Health Service. So how many others? are operating illegally mm. at our health facilities. Right. That we do not you, you see the question? And we wait to be killed before we are told that the man was Four operating lives. In, illegally. Look, the question, I, I asked the question the other time. I said, look, I had aunties and grannies mm. who were nurses, and midwives, and all of that. Mm. Some of them, and I had opportunity to do volunteerism with the Ghana Health Service for mm. five years for polio, measles, yeah. eradication, the NIDs. And we worked with community health nurses. Mm. Sometimes, some of the corners that we enter, mm you will find a small structure, a makeshift place. Mm. Then you have one of the nurses will ask, who gave you license to? Right. Why are you doing? This was about some 10 years ago. Mm. They will ask questions. Yeah. When the people can't answer, they make a phone call. They shut them down. Right. Mm. Today, the community health nurses, mm -hmm. they even don't want to go around, even in Hachimota. So that's their work. They don't and want to they even. Don't do they don't want to even go around to check mm -hmm. whether they are because they are supposed to be working in tandem with the uh, public health people right. to check. Oh, there's a gutter here has potential of cholera, mm -hmm. an outbreak. Mm -hmm. Then they come and report, and then mm -hmm. they go and deal with them. They are right. supposed to be working together. Today they come. They want to make up. Wear color, color hair. Wear long earrings. Sit in the office. Mm -hmm. The real community uh, health work mm -hmm. is not done. I remember as a kid. When I go to the hospital, mm -hmm. in the early hours, before the doctor arrives, right. the OPD is usually addressed by a nurse mm -hmm. right. who comes to tell you, maybe today he chooses how to wash your hand right. or what to eat, what mm -hmm. not to eat, and all of that. These days, you don't find them. Mm -hmm. They are almost always late to work. Mm -hmm. And these are supposed to be nurses who are supposed to be nursing our problems and making sure that we are healthy. Yeah. So it fits into the conspiracy theory that, look, there are people working as nurses, as teachers, who didn't originally want, want to be there? They needed policemen <laughs> and soldiers.
who didn't want to be there, but because they want job security and because yes. they didn't find any yeah. other job, yeah. they want to use as a stepping stone to get in there. And it's a shame. It but it, look, if you're a public health nurse this morning <laughs> and you are not doing what you have to do per your training, shame on you. <laughs> a big uh, shame Johnny, on you. Uh, you know, um, I mean, uh, shame, shaming people is enough. Mm. I think that the Ghana Health Service should take the blame. What Professor Bedou Akosa, uh, is that uh, yeah. the, the public health officer is saying? Yes. Yeah. For me, I mean, it's no excuse. Whose job was to ensure that Ama works at facility A, mm. Bright works at facility B? Right. If at Akrade, here, mm. Mm. okay, in the Eastern region, mm. this is happening. I am wondering what is happening in some remote areas mm. where there are chips compounds and others. Okay. Which people are working there? Who is taking care? Go to Kolibu mm. here in Accra. There are people who, when you enter Kolibu and you want a service, will pull you aside and say, hey, come, there's a private facility here. Exactly. They'll do it faster yeah. than Why? you. The health service should yes. be aware. Yeah. They cannot claim that they're mm. not aware. They know all these things. Yeah. It's the same with all public institutions. And yet we wait uh, when somebody dies, they will come and They'll say, come oh, the man was Look. operating illegally. Right. Right. Like, right. How does it work? I mean, yeah. this won't be even the first time we're being told someone is working illegally. We've had These stories where like yes. doctors four. have been arrested early yeah. morning. So you, there are bodies or councils that are supposed to regulate these people. That's, That's that it. you renew your license. Right. And so just like how the names are published for various occupations. Publish if you publish them. a name and it's not there, ideally, the onus lies on me as a patient or as you know a citizen entering a particular facility to know who and who mm. has the right to be there. Right. Of course, you can't do it for everybody. Like Brad is saying, how am I supposed to know that person A or person B <laughs> is supposed I mean, to be on the ground? And so it comes back to the facilities yeah. as well to make sure that the people who they employ because are the, you know, as, registered As soon on as the you board. set Otherwise, up the place really, and I'm ill, I will oh, go and come. assess because you have yeah. told me not to do self-medication. Exactly. So pay your advice. You are, you know, supervising exactly. people there. So pay so your advice because I don't want to do self-medication. Mm -hmm. I, I will go to the health center when I see it. Yeah. Now, I noticed in, back in the day when I used to do a lot of travels mm. around, I, I used to get to a, a village. Mm. Friday, you get to the health post, there's nobody there. Saturday, there's nobody there. Sunday, there's nobody there. Monday, maybe Tuesday, that you find a person has come back from weekend, wherever they went to, and they have just arrived. In <laughs> all of this, they will perhaps leave uh, an assistant who doesn't even know. But sometimes they find people from the villages right. and just they keep them. them mm. So they are the ones who will be acting as head of the entire helpers or mm -hmm. chip compound. And these are people paid with taxpayers' mm -hmm. money. Yeah. So if you didn't like the posting mm -hmm. or you, you don't feel... Uh, that you want the job, why do you still keep it and take the pay? And uh, my problem is there are people supposed to be supervising. So what do they do in mm -hmm. terms of supervision? Mm -hmm. Every week there's supposed to be a report. Mm -hmm. What kind of report do they give you? Do you spring up on them sometimes surprisingly to go and check what's happening where they are? That is why you have, that is why as supervisor of the district, mm -hmm. you have a car mm -hmm. available to you. That is why they've given you a place to lay your head. That is why they pay you money. That is why you have assistants who must work. That's why they have people, supervisors who have motorbikes as well for places that are not easily motorable. So use the resources that they're giving to you to make sure that we're all protected. Mm. Four lives have been lost. And now we are getting, oh, the man was operating illegally. And so yeah. what? That's that, that point. Yeah, and so what? Bad. Johnny, so I am hoping that... Uh, Does it save yeah, the life? I, I, I Do we not, know uh, how many of those people are breadwinners? Uh, Do we know how many of those people have been trained, ah, spent money on them for, for all these years? Yeah. Do we know? I, I, I'm, I am not. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. like, they're things, they're people's relatives. And so you shouldn't just look on the blind side. Right now, like you said, if you tell us he was illegally operating, and then what? What am I supposed anything? to do? Can because I go into any exactly. any uh, Ghana Health Service facility and say that, hey, you, you don't look like you are uh, yeah. illegally look at your allowed to operate. <laughs> so w walk out. I can't do I that. Can't. So it is their job. But I'm, I'm saying that. I, I'm not a lawyer. Mm. But um, I, I wish mm -hmm. that the, f the families will get some legal advice right. on this. You see, sometimes we allow these things to pass mm. and then it continues. Right. I think that the little law I know, mm. the, g g the Ghana Legal Service mm -hmm. can be taken on legally on this right. for allowing 
uh, such a person in its facility resulting in death. Yeah. And so if there are lawyers who are uh, interested, I think they can see the just take it up. and take the Ghana Health Service yeah. on. I don't want, otherwise, some of these things will uh, On that score, let me say good morning to our friends at the Ridge mm. Hospital. Last mm -hmm. weekend I was there and uh, they, they did a very good job, clean, professional and all of that. I, I mm. think that when they do well, we must congratulate them. Of course. Uh, if they sleep to say it. Uh, you know, we ask for us. We, we, we are not on autopilot. When you do well, we will say it. If you don't do well, we will say it too. Yeah. Good morning to our but friends. It, 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 and it, it, all hardworking medical practitioners, Dr. Oh, Nanama and her friends, it, and it, everybody who is working like they should be working. Yeah. Good morning. God Good bless morning. you. But yeah. if you are not doing it, <laughs> again, shame on you. Shame on you. <laughs> but is the facility, is, Jordi, is it really uh, rich? Is it fully operational now? Yeah. Or, well, or, I mean, where I, where I was around the emergency, mm. ah, okay. uh, it was full. I think yeah. some of the wards as well. Yeah. The pharmacy was functional yeah. and they were Most working very well. I, I, I like the software thing they brought mm. to it and the fact that the pharmacists don't take the money themselves. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bank Everything closed by, yeah. yes. To take so the it's money. all well, automated. Well, it's only rich. Other hospitals have. Cool. <laughs> you have invited me to your place before. You are, it's an open invitation. Okay. Right. Excuse me. Right. You, no. For what? you don't know, you know you how to give. You, you, you don't know how to give. As a fiddle. But we're ranting. We're talking about this Easter celebration. And those of you who hit the beaches, the real question is, are beaches safe? We saw them releasing some not more men to be on the ground, but we still had deaths at Tawala, and many other beaches still carried on with people drowning and other issues. So are the beaches really safe? Johnny, have you been to the beaches? Safe? Uh, no, oh. I don't think they are safe, and I don't think they are clean either. Exactly. The water looks dirty, mm -hmm. smelly, and mm -hmm. I wonder how people still go and bath in it. Go and swim in it. We must begin to hold our tourism ministry accountable for some of these things. Mm -hmm. They always say that the beaches are tourist sites, yeah. yet they are not safe. And every time you have Nadmo and the Marine Police, they'll put red flags here. Look, it, it doesn't work. <laughs> now, how do you have a thousand people mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. beach and you have just two lifeguards? <laughs> Does it make sense? No. It doesn't make sense. So that boat is not thinking right. The beach operators are not thinking right. The tourism ministry is not thinking right. Uh, Johnny, Everybody is asleep. Johnny, and we are hoping that super, things will be fine. Superman. Because we are assumed that if somebody goes to the beach, <laughs> yes. he, he right. knows how to swim. No, Superman. Johnny, Superman, Superman can, save, can save a lot of people. You can they fly? Oh, yeah. people yeah. can so they if fly. there are two, if, if there are supermen, why not? They can save the people. Look, I would rather go to a <laughs> pool than to a beach because I know that the okay. numbers are regulated. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You will have two lifeguards who are watching. And surprisingly, <laughs> at, the, at the pool, they are watching. Well, the only watch. difference between the pool and the beach is in the pool, you can only pee, you can't pool. But in the beach, you can do both. Anyway, <laughs> let's see what you have to say about the beaches, whether they are safe for us to be there. Enjoy. <laughs> a public holiday. This is a time where people would want to go and have fun, relax their mind at recreational facilities or even tourist sites. But how well are these facilities with regards to safety and security? This is Daily Rant. Let's keep talking. You are your own security here because there is no police or anyone to guide you. You are here to have fun. So you should be careful on what you do and how you move. That's the only security you have. But other than that, I don't think there is any security here. I come here every time to have fun here at La Pleasure Beach. I don't go to any beach apart from La Pleasure Beach. Why? Because La Pleasure Beach is boost of security. Thai security everywhere. You can find out from the gate. They have the scan machines that scan people to know whether you're carrying a, a weapon or something. You know, from there you see the police people all around. They have the internal security walking through in Mufti and stuff like that. Talk about um, they scanning you, but I've never experienced anything like that here. That one is true. It's true, but sometimes it's only the cars. I mean, what I've seen, I've witnessed is only the cars that they scan them, but the individual that they comes in, they don't scan them. They will just check you. Sometimes they don't check you. They just just pay, you enter. You pay, you what enter. They check is just the money. They are so interested in the receipt. Yeah. <laughs> but to scan you to find out whether you are having... 
I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I've been coming here always. It's not about the money, bro. If it's about the money, after all, we all live in houses and we live in the area. And we... Now, also, he was talking about scanners and everything at the security gate. Is there a reason why you come to, let's say, Labadi Beach? Because when you say, oh, your security is guaranteed. Oh, I don't think about security if I come here. I only think of coming to have fun. Enjoy, like, just enjoy. Have fun. Because if you are talking about security, the ABCB are sometimes, maybe if someone is drowning, okay, fine, I have not witnessed that before, so I can't say much. But if you are talking about security, security, only it's one, it's just one show who he is. George, uh, listen, I, don't, I totally don't agree with the lady, for once, for once. You know, because, uh, because if, if there are no security here, like this beautiful woman cannot be sitting here. I'm sitting here. Myself, for you, for you, maybe I want a laser card in a I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been coming here, I've been coming here for the past 20 years. Yes, I've been coming here every, if not Saturday, Sunday, I do come here. And I come here sometimes in the night. You understand? But you know. You understand? People, probably the people that are around are not valid, but that doesn't mean that someone is protecting you. My brother, my brother, my brother, my brother, they know the situation, the security, those people, they are ready people because everywhere, if you be a men's and woman, they are ready people, but they know the security of La Pleasure Beach. That's why they are not doing that. Yeah, yeah, I don't, you can, from here, the woman can go and verify from the gate, and I can even, because I've been coming here always, I know some of the security guys in Mufti, because I quite remember some years back when I came here with a woman, my girlfriend, uh, uh, somebody took her phone from her, but before we got to the gate, so I, I decided not to chase the fellow, but before we, we, we because when you say you get the phone, yeah, before we realize, two policemen, brought the phone and the man. That is it true? Because you know, the gate is not only the entrance to this place. three or four gates here. Do you get it? I quite remember the last time I came here with a friend and his girlfriend. They were sitting on this table, exactly table. I decided to go to the washroom. When I came back, their phone, their bag is gone while they have security around. Do you get it? We couldn't find the person who took it. So we just stood here and my, my friend said that we should borrow him money to send his girlfriend to the house. You, you, you could see just a few minutes that we stood up, the man, their money, their phones are gone. Do you get it? But for you to think or to have an assurance that security is here, yes, yeah, security is here, but if you don't take time, idea, even your body will be taken off. Seriously, that's why I, um, I said you have to, it depends on how you take care of yourself. But Uber Jane said there is security, so Uber Timmy Media, that is your... George, George, what, what are they saying? What are they saying? Even in our houses, in, even in our houses that they've, they've locked, we will lock you. They are talking as if Unam Hua not police guy, though. Yeah, no, it's not that. But it's not like that. But, but, but if you are saying, sir, if you are not comfortable with the security, yeah, I want to ask. Ube so who say if you are everywhere at the beach, this Ube who police are not the maintenance. How? That are location days, like maybe on the first January, twenty fifth December, on Easter Friday, Easter Monday, that day, that one you can see military men and policemen around. Do you get what I'm saying? I totally disagree with them because. Uh, 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 I've been coming here. I have over 20 years' experience. The, it doesn't. A, a, a policeman is not always in a police uniform. So you so, somewhere mufti. You can't tell me that because you know, you will not see a policeman walking around. There is no security, my brother, George. If here that we are sitting, there is no security. Like you are misunderstanding everything. I'm only trying to say that fine. You can't say security anyhow, but it depends on the way you comport yourself. It's very important. If you don't comport yourself, because there is security here, they wouldn't deal with you or like you are safe. Let me remind you this: we are in this country, and one of our MPs got murdered. Do you get it? He had security, he had dogs, he had CCTV cameras, but he was murdered in his cold, own cold blood, in his house. Do you get it? So are you telling me, say, the security couldn't do anything about okay, it? For instance, Mabahi, Mabaha. Yes, for instance, Mabaha. Maybe uh, me could join me down here. Who, who, who should I blame? No, or who should my parents blame? No, your parents your parent cannot blame anybody because when you have security... You went into... But I know maybe security should be tight here. So at least if I'm, I'm swimming, I should get lifeguards here. We have indicators here. That if you come here, they will, they will show you that my ear, don't swim here, don't swim here. There. Don't go here. So if you are going to that direction, they will, they, will, they will whistle for you to come back. But upon all this whistle and you still want to go to that extent and you drown, that one is your own palava. Ah. For you and me, you know that security in Ghana, even on our MPs and president... In 
it's doctor who doctor same day doctor Oshini Pasani and Konkro. But doctor Ghanaian security is the best in the whole Africa. Let me tell you, in the whole Africa, Ghanaian security is the best. From which book? They they self the the legislative themselves are complaining. They say their security is not tight. What do you think the government should do? To ensure say, security at tourist sites are improved. Because, for instance, if me could be now no say all the time I'm safer, it will make me want to go there. So, what do you think the government should do to improve security at tourist sites? Oh, for me, I think government is doing enough. It's doing, but maybe it's not enough. The police service should come on board, the military should come on board, uh, NADMO should come on board. Uh, the, even a uh, 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 Red Cross should also come on board, you know, because what happened at Kintampo, maybe if Red Cross was there, maybe they could have they could have done something. Maybe, maybe, in quote, in quote. So I think all stakeholders should come on board to make uh, tourist centers in Ghana work again. The young ones, if a young one is coming to a tourist center or probably Labadi B to swim or something, there should be someone who is an adult to guide the person? But um, we in Quarano, like they leave their case. In Quarano, didn't they come with their parents? Most come. Most, most come, come, but I'm only talking about those who come alone. Okay. Uh huh. You should guide them, and you, someone should be there to guide them as to where to go and as to where not to go. Okay. I think it will help. And I'll, I'll talk about those who swim, like in, in in the sea. But like one thing that I would prefer, and I want the government to enhance those things, like the. Um, swimming costumes and like swimming um, lifeboats and those things that they normally use to swim. At least if you are entering into the sea, you should have those things. You should have it. And it shouldn't be like every day you should pay. You know, if I'm coming to swim and I have to pay for those things, I won't love to come and swim. I'll just come and sit down. Because the, the lifeguards here, they are paying them. So, so if they are paying... Him. I disagree with him. If you are coming to swim, why should government provide a uh, uh, life jacket and stuff like that? They're going to board a ship or a boat to travel to another. They don't provide those things for you. Those places. You paid for the fare. You paid for the fare purposely because if even you pay for the gate, when you want to climb the ferry or something, you have to pay again. You understand? So that money, that money being paid. If I bought a car and I'm going from traveling from here to Kumasi and I pay for the transportation and I have a, an accident, are you telling me that I want to have so it means that if, it means that people here should give uh, revelers life jackets to swim. Yes, that was what I'm saying. But it's not done. It's not done. It's not done anywhere. I can't see, not even one. I can't see that. It's only the, the, the swimming uh, board that I can see that they, they have it for the kids and uh, a tie, rubber tie, rubber, those things. It's, it's, not, it's not good. If I know I will swim, I should prepare. Maybe I want to be adventurous. Uh, okay, then maybe you join Castro and be adventurous more. <laughs> you see, because uh, if I don't know how to swim, why should I even go and swim? But if I know I want to come and swim, I'll prepare and prepare well and come. Safety and security at our tourist sites have been a concern to many. How would you assess security at our various tourist sites in the country? And these are the concerns of some revelers who came to La Pleasure Beach to have fun. If you want to join this discussion, just log on to our social media platforms. On Facebook, it's News on TV3 and on Twitter, it's our News TV3. This is The find I starting this morning says that the U.S. military deal, what we know so far, that allays fears. The photograph of the defense minister is here. And uh, armed robbers strike at Oyarifa, bust staff unions, back MD's reforms, and injection death toll rises to four. Uh, the Ghana Health Service says that the health worker was operating illegally there. The Today newspaper says, I need the whole face of CID today, and Palmer Buckle blast NPP NDC over politicization of national issues. Those are some of the papers I have with me this morning. Now, my guests will do the talking after the Easter break. Uh, Yao Piakubi is um, a member of the NDC's communication team. He's with me here. Yao, good morning. Good morning Hope Brian. you're doing great. Um, How was Easter? We are cooking. Uh, mm. Right. It was, it, was, mm. it was a moment to reflect, okay. to, to, to think about the future, and right. to think of what we need to do as a people. We know the essence of the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. 
I'm grateful. And a member of the MPP's communication team, a legal practitioner, uh, is also here. Gary Nimako is also with me in the studio. Good morning, too. Good morning, brother. And I, I hope Easter was fine for you, too. Well, not bad. But if you, if you see my, my brother sitting on my, my left, you can see how he's doing well. Yeah, he's doing well. And his excellency in another's government. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you, you heard him. You, you're doing great. Well, you see. I told you we were talking about religious matters. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was, I was Welcome to, to the studios that, after the break. Gary then. wants us to start okay. swimming in the, in the hot water. Oh, so we can't do religion <laughs> devoid, of, devoid of our everyday Politics. Lives. All right. Well, we are okay. Politics. Okay. Like, if you see mm -hmm. how. Pama Baker insists uh, that we, we are doing too much politics. He's blaming the MPP NDC for it. But let's start this morning's conversation with a time this morning. The president uh, is the message this morning. It's captured on page 16. It says that um, it's asking Ghanaians to commit themselves to the values of love, service, and sacrifice as they join the Christian community to celebrate Easter. Now, the president said that the occasion should be used as a real source of hope that there is a brighter future ahead of uh, Ghana. Uh, he, he reminded Ghanaians of their responsibilities to God and towards one another. Now he said that we are determined to free our uh, people from a mindset of dependence, aid, charity, and handouts. Again, the president said we are bent on mobilizing Ghana's own considerable resources to resolve Ghana's problems and we recognize the connectedness of our people and economy to those of our neighbors. So he said we are building a Ghana beyond aid. That's the president's uh, extra message to Ghanaians. Gary, it, it, it is good I, I start <coughs> with you. Right. The, the president simply said that the, the future is bright. Is that what you see? Well, good morning, Bright. Mm. Good morning to your viewers. Good morning to my brother on my left. Mm. Uh, as I said, uh, you know, uh, if you live in a country where there is peace, mm. where there is love, definitely to reflect at least in your in your day-to-day -day activities. Sometimes not only about the financial gain right. that you get, but the, the, the enabling peace that you get in itself, I think it's a clarion call for us all to celebrate. What is the president say? Ghana beyond it. You recollect that over the years, it has been our practice that we have been over dependent on aid, on foreign aid. And uh, the president wants to see a departure, a sharp departure from this dependence to a situation whereby we can be able to produce for ourselves, industrialize for ourselves, build an economy, for the economy to transcend beyond the normal, usual aid, aid handouts. Mm. Clearly, right. If you live in your home, and somebody must subsidize your, your daily income or your family income on daily basis. If you are not careful, that person will now begin to take a direct control of how and what you should eat in your house. Now, we live in a country where our budget is always, every time, financed by foreign donors. Is that a way that we should go on a long-term basis? I think that no. On a long-term basis, there must be a system in place whereby we can be self-sufficient and self-reliant. The reason is simple. In these advanced economies where even they are giving us these, these aid and all these monies, mm. they too are going through difficulties. So by and large, if you are not careful and your mindset is that let us continue to, to depend on them on a daily basis, year by year, if you are not careful, when their economies get to the crunch, it will affect, it will affect us. That is the reason why I think it is, it, it is, it is very important that now it says the president said, look, let us look at the marked departure from this, our usual dependence on foreign aid and foreign donor. And then let's put a switch whereby Ghana is now not a situation of aid, 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 but trade, business, investments. So that at the end of the day, once the trade and investment, mm. we can benefit. But are we doing what we need to do to get there? You see, the systems are being put in place now. If you look at the government uh, flagship program of One District, One Factory, which is here to take off this year, mm. you realize that the government is taking copious steps to ensure that the system to ensure that we industrialize are put in place. Because see, the only way that I think we can stabilize our currency is for us to be able to produce the things that we import. Some of them even importing toothpick. And there's a so much drive for dollar and foreign currency. And once there's a push-pull effect, the demand is so high, 
the price will obviously escalate. So we must make sure we depart from this everyday importation, everyday importation, to produce these things here. So at the end of the day, the, the, the demand for the dollar will, will reduce. I'm aware that uh, the government now is trying to introduce a, a certain you know, uh, uh, incentives to even, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, 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 poetry through, uh, right. uh, through uh, uh, this bank, uh, Exim Bank. We're told right. uh, they will cut down the importation to of cut down it, chicken. Ex exactly. Now you realize that people are importing chicken day by day into the country. Now, if this is cut down, it means that the pressure on the dollar on that area or that side of the economy will be reduced. Now, that alone is also not enough. There should be other areas where people now begin to now see that, look, there's a need for this industry to create employment for people. When there is business here, there's employment here, that's the only way you can survive. Aside that, this day by day, every day looking for handouts and saying, well, you know, we are poor, uh, we are poor, so give us something, give us aid, give us aid. To what extent can we survive on that one? So I think that what the president has said is very apt. And he cannot do this without sacrifice. You see, sometimes you go through hunger today to get something better tomorrow. That is why you have to tighten your belt. But you see, the, the people will say, well, when we say tighten your belt, everybody must, must tighten his belt. Not that some belts are loose and other, other belts are, <laughs> you know, are also tight. Mm. So I think that what, what the president said is about sacrifice. We should all sacrifice for the betterment of our country. But there's hope, in, there's hope in sight. There's real hope in sight. And I think that with the commitment of the president and the people that he has appointed to put them in power to mm. ensure that our betterment is saved, that our, 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 our collective will as a people is saved, let's pursue that. And at the end of the day, within the four-year mandate or the eight-year mandate, the people of Ghana will be, will be the, 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 you know, the, the, the assessors and the judge the work of the president. Right. And I hope by then, my friend, my friend who I always, I always maintain yeah. that my friend is somebody that who should come and join the, the NDP party. <laughs> you see, I've always told him, but uh, for some reason he still wants to be in the NDC. With the NDC. <laughs> but you see, if you are not careful, this party is going to run for four years, eight years, twelve years, sixteen years. Mm. In sixteen years, no position. It will be very difficult for you, <laughs> you know. So back and yeah, forth. Yeah, this is an opportunity that, uh, to. Uh, uh, Renounce your membership of the NDC and quickly jump yeah, to the NDC yeah, if, yeah, if yes. you agree. And this is not the first person to the first person to the first person to It's a very it's a, it's a, it's a laughable issue. I mean, let right. me say a good morning to you. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a future bride too, well, from what you see. That's what well, the president said. But, but to, to to just respond quickly to Gary's uh, okay. request, I want him to understand that we don't join political parties by virtue of the fact that. Uh, you just want to be part of the political party. You join because you are convinced by the ideals and the principles of that organization. Oh, okay. And I, in, in, in so doing, you believe that that approach and the principles and their mode of, 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 of development is what will lead, first of all, uh, us out of this, our current situation, and to build a better country. Mm -hmm. So I, I, thank you for, I thank him for his request. For the invitation. Unfortunately, <laughs> Uh, I don't. I am not a believer of the property well, owning democratic approach to development. Well, we'll I, I hope that <laughs> one day, one day, you have a change of mind. But, 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 the, but, the, but the important thing about the president's message, mm. I think that Ghanaians are being fed too much with sloganeering and name calling and and, and just slogan. I mean, putting words out there. I mean, we, we've seen too much of that and. People are beginning to ask that: Does this government really mean business, or they are just in to continue throwing out their names, to continue throwing out their slogans, to, to, to no end? Because, you see, right, we have been fed with one slogan to the other. I mean, the regime will put forward something: one district, one factory; one village, one dam. And all they do is that they keep throwing these terms and slogans out there. But in practice and in principle, there's nothing really happening on the ground. They told us that they are restoring nursing training allowance. Since January, the nurses have not been paid. They told us that free SHS will be for all school-going children. They come into power, and we are being told that it's going to start gradually, and only first-year people are going to start. They tell us that they are going to give, put a, a, a dam in every village. As at now, we don't know about what's happening to that policy. 
Now the president comes and tells us that we are going to develop Ghana without aid. I think that is a laudable thing to say and to, 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 to imagine. I mean, th since independence, and even before independence, the pre-colonial regime, mm. the colonial masters themselves told us that they were coming here to civilize us and to develop us. And so even the colonial powers themselves had a vision in their understanding of developing and getting us, uh, making us independent and so on. So it is not a new call. After independence, Osage Fokwam and Kroma and successive regimes kept saying that we need to be self-reliant, we need to be self-sufficient, and we need to move in that direction. Just saying Ghana beyond aid means nothing. It's about which approach and mechanism is happening, is on the ground in ensuring that we go beyond it. And, and I don't he see outlined a couple of things. Is it one first, the one district, when first one of factory? all, you tell us that you are going to do one district, one factory. And your approach to building those factories, first of all, is to bring Chinese businessmen to put forward those factories. That in itself is a defeat of the principles of self-reliance and self-sufficiency. Because How? we've been told, we've been told that it is Chinese businesses that are going to be putting up these factories. You are saying that we need to go beyond it. We need to build ourselves and develop our capacity and so on internally. Now, the approach to doing that itself is externally oriented. And that is what I'm saying, that the government itself keep contradicting. I mean, the president is saying that we should mobilize our resources for our own development. What does that mean? Does that mean that we should be leveraging our resources out for external powers and multinational companies at the expense of the local economy and so on. So you see, we keep saying all these things about development. We keep talking about development and going beyond it and so on. But we need to, first of all, as a people, define what development means to us. Does it just mean the growth in GDP, the growth in, in the economy, in the expansion of our productive sectors, which in essence, the beneficiaries of that of that, of that growth is external multinational companies whereby the development is foreign and externally oriented. Or we are talking about an internally integrated approach to development where the Ghanaian businessman, where the Ghanaian people themselves are able to take control of their resources, harness it and develop internally and become self-sufficient and self reliant So these terms that we keep throwing about, about development, about expansion and so on, means nothing unless it is linked to the proper benefits that the ordinary people of this country will, 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 will get out of that. And so, so if the president says that he's on track to achieving Ghana beyond aid, you, you do not see it you see, at all? I, I listen to, I've listened to a lot of spokespersons from government, and I'm talking about the Minister for Information, mm. somebody like uh, Honorable Mustafa Hamid, who argues that they don't, f f first of all, they themselves don't believe in a development plan. They believe that once you come, you do what you have to do, and then you get out. You cannot go beyond it if you don't have a long-term strategy and vision in ensuring that you get out of that. So if the government spokesperson himself is saying that they do not, I mean, their party do not believe hmm. in a development program, and that they believe that once you have a four-year mandate, you do whatever you have to do to ensure that there's foreign direct investment, and then there will be growth. That in itself is, 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 is a lack of understanding of what development and ultimately getting out of aid means. And that is why I keep saying that the government is either confused or they don't mean what they tell Ghanaians and they are just on a certain <laughs> sloganeering drive to <laughs> ensure that at the end of the Ghanaians are confused and will buy into these things they see. You see, the bottom line is that, right, and in, 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 in comment, I can see that uh, Gary is feeling jittery already. <laughs> oh, you're coming <laughs> you see, the, the bottom line is that Development means a lot of different things to different people. For me, I believe that when we talk about development, it is about taking control of our resources. It's about ensuring that the resources of the country, first of all, benefits Ghanaians, and if there are excesses and surpluses, we think about external trade and so on. How can you be talking about development without aid? Well, first of all, we are signatory to this economic partnership agreement where foreigners are allowed to come in and compete with our infant industries and kill them. You understand? And once you are signatories and all these international protocols and so on comes in, it puts a certain burden on your ability to expand your economy and to develop. You cannot just be talking about that without the linkages to 
the externalities yes. and how government is bent on ensuring that there are but, alternatives. But to it, isn't that why, for instance, it, the president's dream is to start one district, one factory, nurture them, grow them to become that giant industry we, we also is it, is it right? First of all, let me say that the president kept assuring us. As of last year, I remember the president told us that by ending of December, 51 of those factories will be ready. As we speak, there's none. We had the launch of the One District, One Factory in the Kunfi amid fanfare and jubilation. Now go and look at the Kunfi Shoe Pineapple Factory. There's nothing happening there. So first of all, the commitment itself and the lack of inconsistencies and coherence in what they keep telling us is a commitment that they intend to roll out. It's, it's what I find shocking. And I mean, it makes it difficult for me to believe whenever they say some of these things. Okay. You see, when the government says that his commitment, one of his main commitments to create jobs, and the creation of jobs is linked to this one district, one factory. And the president is asked in January, I think in February, meet the press, that how many jobs have been created? And where are those jobs? The president says that he has no idea, and that they should give him three months. We are in April. Where are the jobs? I expect that. He has maybe no, he's he's said three months. Maybe, will be, maybe will we're yet to ask him. Is that what he's saying? That person could answer this question. We are yet to ask him. Right, you right. see. Right, in all fairness, but, you see, I, I think is that... It, is it, are these slogans, are these uh, things, slogans that we are right, hearing? These from, are from not slogans. These are political one district, matters. One party, one village, these one are, These are matters in action. These are not slogans. Okay, so we are yet to see... Wait, wait, a, wait a minute. Not even, even before my... You see, my brother is jumbling up a lot of things together. Now, 2016, this government was voting into office. 2017, the president was sworn in. Now, the president said, if I'm, you know, elected in power, I will, I will, I will uh, uh, initiate what you call a free uh, SHS. Yeah, school. That is a prospective application of the policy. Now, I have a big difficulty when, you see, every policy that you, you, you initiate must come with a budget. 2017, you are in office, you do your budget, and then you say that you are going to apply the policy 2017. How do they expect a retrospective application of the policy? That is why I don't even get it in the first place. Because you see, the budget the government put in place for 2017 was to apply to the, to the year one. Mm. And everybody in year one knows that they are enjoying free education. So when you say that that policy hasn't been implemented to the fullest, I don't get it. Okay. Because those in the year two and the year three are already enjoying half bursary. Have bursary. It's already there. Did you promise to have bursary? No, please, 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 please. See, let's see, let us know sometimes through that the people of the easy. Let's people understand mm. that you see, you don't vote me in the power in 2016, 2017, I take office. And then you say that certain certain burdens, certain obligations, which I did not even it's not even part of my budget, I should inherit it. 2017, the government to be said, look, let me apply the policy prospectively, which means that now in the next year, those who are also now going to go to year two. The year one to come and, and drive free education. It will progress in that manner. Mm. So when you say that it's not free education, it means you are just trying to tell the people of Ghana that what, they, what you are saying is not true. That's a fact. Now, one district, one factory is a government flagship policy initiative, which, you see, it's like, like Thomas says, they don't have faith. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have faith. I see. They don't have faith. It's like when Jesus Christ died and I resurrected, they said, Look, I still have to see and put my hand at where you know, the, the rape, where you were. You know, you, know, you don't have faith. Before you, you the government program has been very clear that June this year, it will kickstart. The list has been made clear to everybody. Now, wait till June. We are now in April, May, and June. Wait till June. If you don't see any action, then you cannot cut a slay. But this kind of pessimistic approach that everything the government says is sloganierism. Sloganierism. But based on what, what, what was said, that 2017 will have 51 factories, how well should we take the June date? You see, government has projections. You come into a government, all right, even prior to taking over, there's a certain image you have about the government, the previous government, that's what I'm saying. Now you take over the, the state of affairs, you realize these people have looted everything, nothing is there in the coffers. Nothing is there. What do you do? You must now put in place certain mechanisms to now raise money to do your projects. One year is just gone. Now this is about the fourth month. You see, mm -hmm. sometimes my brothers talk as if this party has been in government for about four years and nothing is happening. It's just one year 
three or four months. You see, if even the woman, a woman got pregnant, <laughs> all right, you will have given birth to just a, a toddler, a baby. You see, the baby, your kids, once they come into the world, uh, but you know, they must, they, they will last for a time. time. To, to they will now begin to crawl. They will now be, you see, take your time for the government. And I can assure you. Okay. I can assure you. This is not a government of mere words. It's a government of action. And you can even see from the very beginning that it came. All these things that they said they're going to do within one year, it has come. Look, this, this uh, what do you call it, the, 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 the free national allowance restoration. The money has been restored to them. It's been paid. They said from since January, they have, not, you, they have not gotten the money. <laughs> you know, government monies are always paid in quarterly, quarterly, yeah, quarterly yeah, basis. Okay. You understand? Look, when we were, when we were in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in secondary school, we were A level, we were getting uh, what do you call allow the allow allowances. Best yeah, it was the best way. But it wasn't giving it every month. It was, it was coming quarter, quarter, quarter. All right? Even at the University of Ghana, when we were enjoying also Bezzi University of Ghana, it was coming quarter, quarter, quarter. If you go and do government project or government work or government, co government contract and you're being paid, it's not paid as and when you, you finish the work. That's not how, that's not how government does its thing. So please, take your time. Have faith in the president. Have faith in the, in the government. I can assure you. Right, can I, I can assure you. No, you're okay. not going to say that again. <laughs> I can no, assure you. I, mean, I can assure you. I just want to highlight I can assure you. one thing no, that Gary keeps I can assure you, I can Gary, assure you yeah. that this pessimistic approach mm. that everything being rolled out by the president or the government will not materialize so that you see you, you paint a certain picture, a certain blurred picture to the Ghanaians. That you see, let us come back. Let us come back. Things are not working well. You know, these people must, must go. I'm telling you. By the time the four-year period runs out, can you say, look, let's give the president additional four years because they've seen the good word of the president and he needs additional four years to, to accomplish all the right. other Okay, things. all right. right a yeah, a minute, yes. Uh, go and then move to Right some. now narrows... Uh, you mean Gary? Uh, Gary now narrows the whole governance process to us having faith, and that is quite unfortunate. Oh, faith the and actions. No faith and actions. I mean, <laughs> let me, the let faith me, is backed by can, the actions. Can I make my point? No, the faith and is backed by the no actions. Problem. The actions no so far, yeah. which you have seen, yeah. no. okay. which is reflecting yeah. on Gary, you can yourself. Can I, Gary, okay, Gary, allow him. Allow him to make his point. You know, you know, you know. I've known my brother not today, and before 2016, I know. I know how he has now improved. Yeah. Okay, you see, right. and I can assure him, if you take his time for it, us, that it will be better. It will yeah. be far better than what to we the extent that he himself will now begin to say that look, I think I'm better off under MPP administration than NDC, and All therefore, right. no, no never problem. again will I join NDC. No I'll problem. Come back to MPP. No All problem. Right. You uh, let that yeah, time come, come first. But you see, the point is that we are not asking these questions in a vacuum. I am saying that, and many Ghanaians are asking that. First of all, the president told us that. The cost of petroleum or fuel will be reduced drastically when it comes oh, to. Well, about let me make a point. I'm, I'm building. You are saying that you are, you are saying that we should have faith and that you've every word you you you, you uttered, you are you are working on it. I've been to see now. Uh, the president uh, also uh, told uh, us electricity uh, charge, electricity no, has been reduced no effective no. first of April. Oh, Gary, right? You are now, when you buy when you yep. buy a, a, a power is now reduced. Uh, Gary, today, Gary, can you can we thirty percent for for for, have, for 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 uh, for uh, what do you Gary, call it? You uh, allow him to <laughs> to go on. I, I come to you if you need to make that point. Okay, yeah. So 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 the point I'm saying is that if the president promised or assures Ghanaians that by the end of 2017 there will be 51 factories, and we are in April and there's none, I no think you still keep telling us that no we, 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 should, we, we should have faith. Have faith. I mean, if <laughs> governance is a matter of having faith, have faith, then I don't think that you had any justification to want to come and rule this, this, this country. And you see, Bright, Gary has gone on and on about the fact that they are doing what they said they would do and that we should have faith and so on. I want to let him know that His Excellency President Akufuado, then candidate Akufuado, in 28, 2008, as early as less than six months of Professor Mills' reign, told Professor Mills that he was Professor Doolittle in less than one year. Now you are here telling us that in one year, four months, we don't have any justification to question and to even ask questions, critique your governance. I think that you are not being fair to Ghanaians, and you should at least credit us with some sense of history and a sense of wanting to know and believing in what, what we really want to, to enjoy. But in conclusion, yes, I, think that, I think that the government, and for that matter, the president gave his word about peace and so on. That is very, very important. Peace is relative. Of course, if you are living in the Flagstaff house in the mansion, you'll be talking about peace. But I don't think that the MP for Esunafu and the people of that community who have been assaulted, the police...
places have been attacked, their vehicles seized and used to rob other people, you'll be talking about peace in this, in this period. You are talking about many people who are being attacked and so on. Look at what happened to supporters and sympathizers who went to the police headquarters to solidarize with the arrest of the general secretary of the NDC. The use of I rubber bullets. you're wrapping up on the... No, I'm making a point. This is <laughs> a wrap up. Yeah, yeah a wrap up. The That's use of rubber bullets and brute force. I mean, how can you be talking about peace within such a dispensation? And so, yes, it is a relative term. What is peace for somebody is another thing for another person. And I think that until they come to a realization that you govern a country which is not homogeneous and that where you sit as Gary is different from where the other person who is a trotro driver sits is different. And you need to put in place mechanisms to ensure that there's fairness and there's a just society is a very important issue. You see, right. Guy, let's move on. No, let's move on. We're running out of time. We're hitting the top of the This government will accept constructive criticisms from all citizens. It's never the case. The government will not, will not even accept or hear. Okay. This we are not the year in Tobia government. We will listen. Okay. Okay. We but you listen. say we are All talking right. too bad. Let, let, let's quickly we'll jump to this one. I'm sure we'll spend just about a few minutes on this one. The, the Flagstaff House has been renamed. Government says that it is not a renaming and that uh, the Flagstaff House is still within the, the, the structure and that what has been renamed Jubilee House is what was constructed to mark Ghana's. Um, uh, Jubilee. Yao, let me start with you. The explanation there, is it something that um, you buy? Well, I, I don't buy it, but I think that you see, this government always keeps throwing things up whenever there's an issue and they want to divert the attention. I think the most important thing that the government should get itself busy with is to provide food, clothes, and shelter for the ordinary people and for the many Ghanaians. I mean, I feel very sad when we need to be changing our landmarks, I mean, along political lines and political colors. It is a, it's, it's, it's quite backward. And I think that we should be making progress as a country. Now, the whole issue about Flagstaff House just being the office of the former president, I mean, Osaji Fukwa Nkrumah, and that the whole edifice, now they call Jubilee House, which was put up to mark our Golden Jubilee. I don't know why they didn't call it Golden Jubilee House, but they are calling it Jubilee House. But you see, Bright, when you talk about the Flagstaff House, it encompasses the residents of the then first president, the offices, and that whole area. They are now telling us that it is just the small office of Osajifo that is Flagstaff House and that it is intact. I think that it is just the government trying to cloud the whole issue with, with certain technicalities in order for us to lose the main essence of the point. But you see, what I found even worrying was the explanation that government spokespersons give. And in, in the, one of the reasons that they cited was that they are trying to get rid of colonial relics and our colonial past and try to assume a certain post-colonial independent stature and status and so on. I asked myself, why are they not renaming all the colonial edifices? Why are they not renaming even Easter? It's a colonial heritage. Why are, not they, why are they not changing the name Easter to something else? Why are they not changing Christmas to something else? Why are they just interested in Flagstaff House? And so you see, you find why are they even interested in the colonial occupation, the recolonial occupation by the presence of US military forces in our country? And they tell us that they are interested in getting rid of colonial relics and the colonial past. I find it ridiculous. And I think that it is important that we deal with the very important issues of food, clothes, and shelter, which is a matter that concerns many Ghanaians. The renaming of some of these things. I mean, the government is supposed to be putting up factories to create jobs for the team in youth. That is what we're expecting, to hear them being named and so on. Not to rename something and then try to make another fanfare once again out of that. Mm -hmm. But for me, it is an inconsistent and an incoherent explanation that people and spokesperson of government is giving about this matter. I find it quite worrying and sorry. Your party has already given the signal that uh, once it comes to power, uh, it will revert to uh, 
flags about? Is that the way to go? Well, I made a point earlier that I find it worrying mm -hmm. that we keep changing our landmarks along political coloration. I think that that is not the way to go. And let the time come first. And I'm sure that once the regime is in place, we'll look at the appropriate means to dealing with some of these mechanisms. Gary, the, the, the name change, government communicators trying to justify it. Is this, is this something we should be spending a lot of our energies on? Right, is there a name change at all? Well, that's what we no, no right. Well, if, if we saw previously, it was flags of us, and the next morning we were seeing Jubilee House boldly on the walls. <laughs> it, it, it signifies a name change. No, you see, there is no name change. At all? There is no name change. No, I don't see any name change. What I see is a proper naming of the premises. Proper called, naming? Called Jubilee House. No, the name change. Look at the the communicator was, was signed by the president, His mm. Excellency. Clearly, nobody or the, nobody changed the name from Jubilee House to Flagstaff House. Let's not forget, President Gufour built, looked for money to build that edifice, edifice and then name it Jubilee House, prior to exit power. Then, uh, 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 President Mills, his also rest in peace, came to power and then said, well, they are going to call it uh, Flagstaff House. There was no formal communique to amend the name from Jubilee House to Flagstaff House. No formal communique. Now, the Flagstaff House building itself is still there, as we speak. Where President Kuma used to reside, where your name Flagstaff House is still there as we speak. Nobody has going to change the name. The edifice that was put there by President Kufo mm. to commemorate our Jubilee anniversary is a jubilee house which is there you understand so there's no name change i don't see any name change so when they say name change on or, or name swapping or whatever they did there's no name change what was put by president before he name is jubilee house to commemorate our jubilee anniversary then president mills came and said he is going to call it flat staff house without any formal communique president Kufuado comes they check the records, they realized that there was no formal communique to amend the name from Jubilee to Flagstaff House. So they make a formal pronouncement that this, by executive power visiting the president, he has named the place Fla Jubilee House. That is all. So I don't see any name change. And there, this, this is so, no issue. So, really, this is no so, issue. So the original Flagstaff uh, structure sitting there, yes. uh, the claim that um, that is different and that the structure now named Jubilee House is a new one. That is what you, what you, you are arguing for. No, that is the position. Like, but if you, if you go there right now, mm. you go there after the program, you enter the Flagstaff House, you realize that the Flagstaff House is there, sitting there. Right, that structure is there. It's still sitting there. Mm. Now the Jubilee House is also sitting there. It's a whole big enclave. You see, it's a whole big enclave, and it's still sitting there. Now that building that was put up by President Gufo, now let me, even, let me even interrogate this matter. Now, prior to the building being constructed, was there any, any building named Jubilee House? No, there was nothing. We all knew exactly. it as the, as the Flagstaff House. Exactly. So I have come to construct a building to commemorate our anniversary. And I'm saying that that building I've constructed, look for the money to build. I'm calling it F Jubilee House. You who didn't construct it, you came and said you want to call it Flagstaff House. When the Flagstaff House itself is still existing, it is still there. It is still there. So, they, I mean, I don't really get a point. Is it so, not a, a simplification of this? Because uh, before this Jubilee thing, we, we all knew that that structure to be the Flagstaff House. In fact, the, the structures opposite the Flagstaff House are known as the Flagstaff House Quarters. So, is it not simply saying that, well, I have built another structure around it, and so I'm changing the name? You see, right, this is like having a, a, a land, all right? This TV, TV3 here, you have your studio here, right? Mm. You have an ad adjoining land over there. Now, this studio, I don't know what, what you call it. What do you call this studio? This is our main studio. Studio one. Yes. Studio one. Okay, if you put it at studio Right, studio one. one. Now, the adjoining land over there is a bare land. So, I secure funding. And I said, look, let's do a project. I want to name it Studio 2. Having completed, I said it's Studio 2. Management change hands. They say, well, we will still name it Studio 1. Anyone in America say, look, 
the, there was purpose for this funding to commemorate a certain event. And we said it's called Studio 2. So we are making it Studio 2. However, Studio 1 is still in existence. Where we are sitting here, it is still here. You see, we started doing even your program when we were in the 2012 13 petition. Let's petition. Right. We're not doing it here. We're doing right. it at the other place. Mm. All right? Mm. Now, if for some reason that place is now on a, under another construction with another third name or second name, why do you want to insist that by virtue of the fact that Studio 1 is this course Studio 1, everywhere should be called Studio 1? No. So, yes, it's a big bare land. The land is there. Mm. But then before, in his wisdom, Say, look, let me go and look for money from India. Got the money, put up the structure, very nice edifice, and then said, I am going to name it Jubilee House to commemorate our Jubilee anniversary. But then news came, he said, look, I am going to name it Flash Tower. He devoted the fact that the Flash Tower was still in existence. All right? We checked the, we checked the records. There is no formal communique amending the name from the original Jubilee House to a Flash Tower House. So the president said, look, I am going to put it back to where it is. That is all. And therefore, by virtue of the power vested in me as the president, I'm going to call it Jubilee House. There is no issue. The, there is absolutely the, no issue. The, the NDC has hinted that uh, it, it comes to power and the name reverts. It, it, is, is that what you think will resolve this? So anytime there's an MPP government, uh, there's a change. Anytime there's an NDC government, there's a change. You see, why do you have to go through this kind of route? That when a new government takes, take, take, I mean, takes place, you know, they say they want to, uh, you know, change the name from another, one name to another name. Like, I, you know, I, I concede to the point my, my, my brother just said. It's a very valid point that he made, that, that we shouldn't go that route. We shouldn't go that route. I think that we should all accept the fact that the, the purpose for, the, for that particular project was to commemorate an event, Jubilee House, Ghana Golden Jubilee Anniversary. So that building is there to commemorate the Jubilee Anniversary, period. So I, I, I really okay. share my, my, right. my brother's opinion right. that see, right. we right. should not go Gary, that route. Gary sought to be mischievous oh. in the, in the examples go that route. in the examples he cited. I mean, he sought mm -hmm. to compare pineapples to meat pie. <laughs> <you see>. know. <laughs> because, I mean, in the example about the studio construction that he gave, that because another studio has been constructed, it, doesn't, it shouldn't be named Studio 1, but it should be Studio 2, etc. So I think that that example oh, is flawed. That, that is, it's that is flawed exactly because, first of all, now. we are talking about TV3 as a premises, as a venue. The fact that you construct another studio doesn't change the premises called TV3 or Adisawe. Right. It maintains its name, yeah, Adisawe. Right. And the fact that you construct another studio doesn't mean that that yeah. studio should, oh. should, should mean that it should mean a change of name for the yeah. entire premise. Yeah. That's yeah. the point. No, yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, the example yeah, you yeah, give. Yeah, yeah, and I'm saying that it's flawed. Yeah, it's not flawed. You see, yeah. Here, we have <laughs> Studio 1. We have Studio 2. We have Studio 3. Is that not correct? It's correct, but it's called TV3. But it's called TV3. We have Studio 1. And the fact that you contract another studio. Can we, okay, assuming that the 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 flags of house over there has huge space from what we've been seeing with the drone shots huge space so as though we are 75 years as a country that's our diamond diamond jubilee and we are able to put up another structure within we should change it to diamond jubilee we have jubilee. to rename it you can say that we can say house. diamond house okay can say diamond house okay. 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 no wait a minute if the president decides if the president decides that I'm going to move, you see, I'm not even going to move, but I've done, I've done a diamond house, all right? This building, constructed, it's a called diamond house, mm. period. It doesn't mean that the seat of government will necessarily move to that place. If okay. you, even if we move to that place, I'm going to call it Diamond House. Right, right, right. 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 Okay. Diamond one house. minute is very important. You see, I don't see this. Okay. Right. 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 Yeah. right, one minute. Yeah. It's, 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 put it's, 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 it's very, <laughs> very, very important. Right. Right. First it's of all, you see, the principles have been laid, but you see, the, the clumsiness with which Gavi seeks to muddy the whole place is what I find worrying. He's saying that once there's another regime that puts up another structure mm -hmm. in the same compound yes. for our Diamond Jubilee, mm -hmm. they can call the place Diamond, uh, Diamond House. They can call right. the, the building. It's the building. Okay, okay fine. So now he's saying the that... The no, of on. the building. No, no problem. Yeah, no the problem. You hold on. Gary, hold on. Gary, hold, hold on. Hold on. Right. He's saying that when there's another building mm -hmm. to commemorate our Diamond Jubilee yes. anniversary, yes. we should call that building you may, Diamond you House. May, you may call we it. We may call it yes. Diamond House. Yes. However, there's a building to commemorate our Golden Jubilee, mm -hmm. but he fails to call that particular building Jubilee House, but rather names the entire area 
Jubilee House. Oh, it's not that is where I find it's the contradiction. The <laughs> See, you understand? So, oh, so right. I, I think no, that I, I'm moving on. It is a it's seat. Just, it's just it an is a I'm grateful. Let's see what happens in... In conclusion, Johnny will come with some It is just an attempt. And the long-standing antagonism and hatred... Oh, no, no, for, no, no, for no, 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 for no, 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 I think no, no, that it should no, no. be made quite clear. Okay. Let, let's not go All right. let, let's not uh, go Let me much. pick some comments. <laughs> I would love us to talk about this Pamabakil issue. Uh, but Johnny, some comments quickly. And of then course, we'll uh, right. Uh, we will not change our text consoles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good morning, TV3. Please tell Mr. President-elect that his government will governing body. Uh, well, he jumped up there again. Let's, let's find it. Uh, that enough of the naming ceremonies, changing the name of the state house, has done nothing about the unemployment of the youth. Mr. President, please deliver to the good people of Mother Ghana what uh, change. Mahama 2020 hashtag Operation One Touch Victory. Nelson Yesu Tor in Ho. AU Farouk in Tamale says the release of Koku Anidoho will not stop us from demonstrating our displeasure towards the sale of Ghana to the U.S. The demo will continue until our sovereignty, which is given to the U.S., is restored. Uh, good morning to you and your panelists. Ghana as a country is a joke on its own. If the kind of leaders we have now were those that we had during the colonial days, we still would uh, be under colonial rule by now. Our leaders should put Ghana first and not their parties and their self-interest. We must be serious as a nation. The blame game is just too much. And her, isn't the party we voted for, we voted to power MPP is dying slowly. You say, we have now been disappointed. No job for the youth. Uh, FM Kwame in uh, LR Town. I don't know where that is. Good morning. MPP, one district, one factory, one village, one dam. Not even a bucket of water has been provided to any of these districts of uh, Ghanaians are fed up with this cheap talks from the political uh, uh, Dragados, is that what you say, Big Mama? Amadou from Kumasi says, as the MPP man, which bears Rizzi talking about, it shouldn't provoke us this morning. Time will tell. Gary, your matter has come. Hey, MPP, you talk as if free SHS has come to solve all our problems. Sikano Wahi, Kwame Nsawam wants to know. Please, the MPP communicator, Honorable Gary's analysis and analogies are so flimsy and queer. If they knew there was nothing in the coffers, why should they keep promising and promising? Relating the economy to a baby is infantile and does not rhyme with these, uh, their sloganeering and promises. Uh, when it's used them, they put up figures called statistics to confuse people. I call such brandishing of figures uh, statistics, uh, not statistics, as he is in Kumbungu. Good morning, TV3. Whereas Judas sold Jesus for silver and gold, uh, his offerings in Ghana also sold Mother Ghana for $20 million. Upon this betrayal, Jesus asked God to forgive Judas. In the same way, we shall pray for Judas' offspring not to go ahead to collect $20 million uh, in Jesus' name. Philip Ying from Tongo Waxing uh, Religious. Good morning, TV3, your able panelists. Please tell the MPP man that they have not even made a single block factory uh, that they're talking about. Uh, also, no place is being signed for the one village one dam or are they still waiting for the 20 million for all those things uh, incompetent government 2020 is not far away abdullah in savalugu good morning uh, nana Adu and his team of government are confused to the extent if i were to have the opportunity to advise them i'll tell them if the kitchen is getting hotter day in and day out they should get out uh, ever since they emerged the seat of government they have not been able to mold one block not even a pavilion why? Alaji will appear in the fear. Kuma, are you General Nunu Mensa? I stopped trusting this MPP government a long time ago, and I don't blame them. It's Ghanaians that I blame for wanting everything for free on a silver platter. Invisible forces, invisible one village, one dam, invisible one district, one factory. No wonder Ghana is becoming invisible. A, B, in Dabongo. And the agenda of this government to erase everything and anything associated with Dr. Nkrumah. Ghanaians should stand firm against whoever supports imperialism to our country. Shaggy and Ima. Finally, Karim inside war says, uh, this government is not serious at, uh, at all, and they have nothing good to offer Ghanaians. All what they have to say is that free SHS. Meanwhile, our economy is very hard. No jobs, fewer prices, galloping taxes are high, and new taxes are still coming, and businesses are collapsing. However, free SHS is everywhere. Do we chop free SHS? Gary and his... Okay, so Gary, that's how you spell your name. Gary and his government uh, should keep quiet and bow their heads in shape. Gary, it doesn't look like the love is not, the, the love is not there for you. This is not a good welcome, is it? 
Well, uh, let, let, me, let me say that uh, we will take all the comments, right? All the texts that came in good faith, and I believe that uh, <coughs> the government is a listening government, and uh, they will listen to what the people are saying, and uh, put in place measures and mechanism that will ensure that they are, they are, they are, you know, whatever they look for, they will get it. But you say that you have faith. Okay, you have faith. Let, let's just one year and some in government. Months. All right, have faith Let, let's I quickly touch on the fine that is this morning. Uh, it's about the U.S. military deal. It says that the hue and cry that greater the Ghana-U.S. military cooperation agreement. Uh, ratified by a parliament continues to dominate debate, but the finder says it has information as to exactly what and what is not in the agreement. Now, uh, on inspection of weapons, the critics say, that's according to the finder, that Ghana will not inspect what the U.S. military will bring into Ghana, and that could lead to dangerous weapons coming into Ghana. Uh, however, according to the finder, the document is suggesting that uh, it does not allow U.S. to bring into Ghana weapons such as guided missiles, nuclear weapons, torpedoes, chemical weapons, byproducts of chemical ammunitions. Again, uh, the military agreement not known to civilians. Now, according to the finder, information gathered through an official interaction with the military high command indicates that Ghanaian soldiers also travel outside Ghana without visa and passport for external operations. So uh, the paper is suggesting that what is in the agreement isn't new. And then again, uh, the finder says that uh, Ghanaian soldiers also use weapons and work freely in all other countries, wherever they are, on external operations as part of military agreements. And so what is in the document uh, isn't anything new. And then on crime and trial, uh, the finder says that from its sources, when a Ghanaian soldier commits crime in another country, uh, that soldier is brought back since the law does not allow such a soldier to be tried or jailed in those countries. So what is in the document is in noon. Uh, again, it says that soldiers, that is Ghanaian troops, are allowed when on external operations to mount, establish and use radio frequency uh, airwaves in that country. So again, suggesting that what is in the agreement that the U.S. soldiers will be allowed to uh, mount uh, radio frequencies is a new. It goes on to talk about the driving permit and says that Ghanaian soldiers are allowed to drive in other countries with their uh, unexpired foreign driver's licenses. And so what is in the agreement that allows U.S. soldiers to drive in uh, Ghana without um, uh, local uh, uh, driving licenses is a new. It goes on and on and on and says that the waiving of duties and taxes uh, are all uh, international agreements and that soldiers are allowed to operate without all these. That's a story put up by Evis Darkman in the finder this morning. Uh, Gary, let's quickly start on, on this one. Uh, so is it a matter of the fact that we do not really understand the document uh, or perhaps um, a lot more of uh, communication need to be done? I think that a lot more education need to be done. And you see, it is the first time that uh, we are seeing this uh, sort of agreement being put in the public domain. We recollect that uh, we are told that in 1998, there was one, and also 2015, was which, 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 I have, which I have before me here, there was one. And then also the current one, which uh, there's a lot of brouhaha on it. But you see, you recollect very clearly, this is the first time, even as a journalist, you have heard. That is something called military Ghana, uh, you know, what do you call it, uh, military cooperation with the U.S. Agreement. First time. Because the 1998 one was not put before, 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 before Parliament as required by the Constitution. The 2015 one was not put before Parliament as required by the Constitution. They were all concealed from the, from the legislature. This is because of some security reasons, that's what we're told. Well, that, that, well that, that, you see, because normally... The security agencies, when it's about national security and all those things, they, they try not to put it before Parliament mm. for ratification. It is the first time that we should commend the president for at least exposing the contents of the agreement to members of Parliament to look at it, to debate it, and then agree or not to or not to agree. Unfortunately, unfortunately, which I think was not the best, that. A document of this nature put before parliamentarians and then it is leaked to the public domain even before the matters therein are, are, are debated and discussed in parliament i think was very unfortunate because you see if the document was meant to be to be to be to be leaked to the to the public the way it was done mm. 
then obviously it would have been leaked long before when it was in the ministry. You know, I don't think that, that was the best. But it has happened. What do we do? Now it's been deb debated upon. People are even now trying to twist it and turn it to say that, well, uh, MPP people are bringing uh, American soldiers to come here, come and rape our women. And when they rape our women, they, 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 they have to now go to America to go and try them. And then when they go and try, you go to America for visa, they would deny visa. All manner of twists and propaganda been put on agreement, all because of lack of what education and information. You see, let's get it very clear here. When you declare somebody with a, a, a diplomatic status, you are called somebody with that, with that kind of status. The Vienna Convention applies. Which the means? Vienna Convention applies. It simply means that that person is accorded certain privileges in the, 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 the country that they, they operate. And they don't go to the, their normal regulatory regime. Now, if that person is, is let's say, you know, going through your, your border checks and all those things, even the bag sometimes is not even searched. The bag, unless they have suspicion to believe that that bag is being used to commit a crime, the bag is not searched. Now, if the person commits an offense in, the, in let's say, in Ghana, and been sent here from where in Ghana, you cannot try the person in Ghana unless you think they to the forum, the forum country. The same way, if a Ghanaian diplomat commits offense in the foreign country, you cannot try him in the foreign country. You must bring him to Ghana. Well, we, there are so many instances, Ghana and the rest, all of them happen. You cannot try them there because of this diplomatic relationship. Mm. Now, you have declared these military people more or less as people to be accorded with diplomatic status. What do you expect? It simply means that they must be accorded all the rights and privileges that diplomats also are given. So, if they come here and for some reason they commit offense, you don't try them in Ghana. That's what we send back. You send them to their forum country, where the forum court will deal with them and try them there. That is in accord with all the protocols under the Vienna Convention. In the same vein, if a Ghanaian soldier does something over there, you bring them to Ghana and tell them in Ghana. You see, this brouhaha and the way it has been thrown out there, it's as if the Americans are coming here, and when they come here, they are, they are intended to come and commit crimes in Ghana, and then you cannot try them in Ghana, so they perpetuate crimes here, and then they must run to America. And then some, I heard somebody, a, 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 a political party chairman, say that his, his village, they must go and sell about 100 cows to go and raise money, to go and get visa, to go to America, and then to go and even make sure that justice, justice is, is what? Is, 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 is delivered when people commit crimes here. You see, we must be very clear on some of these things. Government did not communicate well. It uh, is, it, that that, that, that is the difficulty. That, 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 so see, government did not communicate It is a manner with which, you see, there's a manner with which the document itself was leaked to the media even before the debate started. You see, the debate that started in Parliament. Then people will be now be informed. Then we will now see, okay, what exactly is, is all this about? Government should send the communicators to go to the ground to communicate, educate the people, let them understand. Because the way it is being twisted and it's being, it's, being, it's as if the Americans have taken over our sovereignty, that we are no longer, you say we are now, we are now, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, slaves in our own land. It's a recolonization. I mean, how? If, you are if, if this document is that good, wh why was the defense minister uh, trying to justify uh, this document on the fact that a former uh, foreign affairs minister had signed it? And so uh, there's nothing wrong with it. If indeed this is this is a good a good document, no, that, that, is, that, that, that is not a, that is not a, the position. The position is that we had had previous agreements before, mm. 1998 to one, 2015 one. We before me here. It's here. You see. This document didn't go to Parliament. Right. The, the, the one didn't go to Parliament. But this was signed by Hanatete. All right? The other one too was also signed. Bottom line is that there must be cooperation and collaboration of, of you know, militaries and foreign countries and Ghana. And, you see, because in the event of these kind of modern crimes that are going on, now crime is now global. Okay. And therefore, there should be cooperation. Mm. It does not amount to any of them Taking over our, our sovereignty that we are now subjugated to America I'm because grateful. of the agreement. Uh, yeah, please come in. And I think it, 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 it is far fetched. Uh, uh, is it that we don't know what is really in the document? Well, I think that the government is embarrassed by its actions, by the action that they are taking amid the many calls of 
political party leadership of many well-meaning Ghanaians about the fact that this agreement is not in the interest of, of this country. Again, you will recall that in the memorandum, I don't know if you've read it, to, that was sent to Parliament, to Parliament, it was stated quite clearly that this, the need for a new agreement was important because existing cooperation agreement had elapsed. And so that is the basis for an enhanced agreement that will seek to ensure that there's collaboration. So what has existed previously, first of all, had elapsed. Secondly, what we are seeing today is an enhanced version of what existed before. Thirdly, from all that they are saying, even if there were existing agreements that were also inimical to our country, per the Supreme Court ruling that compelled all agreements to be sent to Parliament in order for it to become valid, that their own person, Anabu Ache, sent on the Gitmo 2 issue, it means that all existing agreements will be now and void. So where we are, is a current agreement that they themselves, chaired by the cabinet that the president chairs, sent to parliament that we had a majority NPP parliament approving of. And that is the disgrace and the embarrassment that they are seeking to remedy by all this justification. You see, right? Quickly. Uh, the I, contradiction I and the time. confusion. Sorry, sorry. And the point I made earlier about, uh, about the president's deception in wanting to build Ghana beyond aid has been laid bare and clearly in this agreement. That you are telling me, and in fact, right, when, you see, when you read the, the Joint Committee of Defense and Interior Committee of Parliament, their report that is sent to the plenary, and the observation, I think 0.62 or something, they themselves clearly state that the unfettered assets that we are giving to these U.S. military officers, our air, our our air, air, air space, our water space, our territorial uh, boundaries, and so on that we are giving to them, maybe the unfettered access to agreed facilities yes, and, and all agreed that. No, 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 facilities. Making, that is not even the point. Yeah, the should, point I should, I should, no, no, agreed facilities. Agreed, yeah, yeah, wrap up. I am, I, 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 I am wrapping See, up. Yeah, wrap up. Agreed so, facilities yes. means nothing. It means access to some facilities. Yes. So it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't deliver the point I'm making. The point okay. I'm making is that yeah, wrap up. in that land, in their own in Parliament's own observation, in point six, at the committee level, they said that. Those unfettered access to facilities and all these things that embodies the sovereignty of this country, once offered to them, would undermine, of course, they use the word may, may undermine okay. the sovereignty and security right. of our country. Now, if Parliament themselves, okay, no, let me make let me, yeah, continue. I'm grateful. Now, if Parliament themselves at the committee I'm level thinks that this would be inimical to our security and sovereignty. What is Ghana okay. sitting here? Okay, yeah, Pia Kubi is a member of See, the MPP's uh, NDC's communication I am not team. A of the yes, <laughs> he's just <laughs> he's a member of the NDC's communication. Gary Nimako is also a member of the MPP's communication. The gentleman, grateful for your Tuesday morning with us. You sent in your comment. We are grateful. Uh, you send them. We we'll read the rest uh, after this. There is more on the show after sports. Stay here. Welcome back. Let's talk about plastics because the menace of plastics is always taking us by storm in this country. The long talk about following the Kigali example, whether to ban plastics or not, will be a conversation for another day. But as the range approach, we thought that we we'll, would we'll engage the Ghana Plastic Manufacturers Association and the Pure Water Waste Collectors Association and have a conversation with them about what we need to know and how we need to do our things just so to forestall some of the challenges. Abo Botre is president of the Ghana Plastic Manufacturer Association. is joining us. Abo, good morning. Good and how are you doing? Um, and okay. uh, Vera Boama is also the Pure Water Waste Collectors Association. Piara, good morning. Thank and you. how are you doing? I'm good. Great. So let's start the conversation this day. There's supposed to be a 10% excise uh, tax, okay? Uh, environmental excise tax. Correct. That's supposed to be expended in our fight against uh, exactly rubbish. You're right. Where is it? Where's the money? Uh, probably I have to ask you. <laughs> I need to ask you to help us to look for the money. Mm. You know, these monies are being paid into the consolidated fund. Right. The law states it um, clearly that there should be an authority to manage this fund. Um, 
the important thing here is this. It is from at the plastic manufacturers right. that we say that looking at the situation at a point in time, um, it's all about money to manage the waste. Therefore, we did not want to depend on government. Right. So we told government, that, please, let's get a special tax okay. on our raw materials mm -hmm. so that the income from these tax would use it to manage it. Is it that producer pay, polluter pay policy doesn't it, work? It, well, it is not even about that. This is a special thing that right. we, the manufacturers, set aside. Set aside, mm -hmm. you know. And this money, since 2015, it's been um, building up on paper. It's okay. been building up in the consolidated fund. Okay. Um, because uh, government is not being able to set up the authority. Right. Uh, which will disperse we'll this funds. Okay. And um, I remember as of uh, November 2015, that mm. was just about six months right. after its uh, inception. Right. The, the fund had accrued over 120 million okay. Ghana CDs. Uh, we're talking about 2018 now. So mm. we could probably uh, run into several uh, hundreds of thousands right. of Ghana CDs. Uh, these monies, we do not have even one single CD. But why? Uh, because we do not have the, the authority, the fund authority to manage or disperse this So fund. who must set up this fund? I'll come it, to uh, very shortly, but who must set up this it fund? Is, it is the government. The government? Yes. And, and since 2015, it's not been well, done. It's not been done. We've been chasing from the east to the west, not to the south. And um, uh, we always get, we have to sit. We'll have to come back again and we'll have to sit. So, so the long talk about, let me come to Vera now, the long talk about the commitment on the side of government to rid the, the society of plastics or even to control it, if you will. This story I'm hearing now, how does that feed into the concept? Yeah, I, I can't say much. Okay, let me first say hello to viewers. Right. And they say, are you cool to plastic uh, waste collectors? Right. I can't say much about uh, the 10% okay. because I'm not a manufacturer. Right. I'm a collector. Mm. But uh, according to what I've heard, because mm. we, have, we, we have been having collaboration with the manufacturers, we have meetings and okay. we know what is going on. Mm. In fact, uh, as my brother is saying, mm. if you look at this stuff, government is supposed to help the manufacturers. Okay. But they said, <coughs> well, we don't want to disturb the government so that in future you say you are disturbing me so no more plastic. Right. Fine. We are going to set aside such an amount mm. so that in future government can give it back to us mm. to do their collection and the manufacturing and the how, how difficult is that in the absence of the fund you go out there to collect these ways recycle how yeah. difficult is it's, the work it's very very <clears throat> tough and now even you don't <clears throat> have buyers as at now now we you have, don't have about people who will buy uh, we, we we buy from the collectors right we have now about ten thousand pickers okay who picks and we are the buyers we go and buy to the manufacturers right and now we don't even have where to send our goods because the two major factories are full so they are not buying from us so, so we so are it means not that recycling let me understand yeah. recycling has come to a, a halt yes literally yes because they've got the goods and the the place is full Wow. So he can't buy again. So we cannot <coughs> go to the market and buy from the pickers. We are having a problem. Mm. And the, they have set aside 10% mm. to the government. Okay. Instead of government to use it, or maybe uh, to do recycling. Right. You know, one district, one factory. Mm. If, uh, it's a, if a factory is on my area, mm. at my area, I won't go to Tema. Right. I'll sell it there. I buy goods from Takura Day, okay. Cape Coast, and the uh, Obuasi to Accra here. Now, Accra is full. Mm. Well, why am I going to send my goods? And we have 10% set aside. Mm. So why can't the government, even the, uh, the manufacturers, the Ghanaian manufacturers? Mm. You know, I, I started this business 2006. Okay. When we started it, it was only bro plus. Okay. So mm. we did the advocacy and people came and then uh, started this mm. business, mm. Uh, the factories. Now, all the Ghanaian factories are collapsed. Why? 
because they don't have support. You know, this business, uh, recycling business, if you don't have money, mm. you can't do it. So all the small, small factories that started, they've collapsed. So it's only these two mm. that are, are functioning. Uh, Chief, so, well, coming for me at this point, so this is the problem we have. There seems, we seem to have hit a snag where we talk about recycling we talk about fighting the plastic menace the money is supposed to be set aside to treat some of these issues exactly. there's nowhere to be find, uh, found sorry as a matter of agency what do we need to do government has to set up the fund and then release the money you know um we are woefully under capacity when it comes to recycling now initially okay. yes we probably didn't have an issue but now because we've been able to get uh, groups like uh, honorables groups and we are collecting several hundreds of tons a day but then the recycling mm -hmm. it's not a snack and this is why we we propose for this money mm -hmm. so that we could re w was this not anticipated this uh, challenge for recycling was it not anticipated when we and that set is it. out to that is exactly why we levied ourselves that special tax so that we could have the honestly looking at what it is there today mm -hmm. if we get the money we could set up probably two the two factories one district we could easily do that mm. you're uh, you're sure about that exactly because you, we how, how much is involved how much are we talking about which will give you so much confidence to say you can set up two factories for, no industry. for for a cottage industry in recycling you probably wouldn't go beyond forty thousand right and you will have a cottage industry okay. in recycling mm. plastics and we're talking about several hundreds of thousands mm. in the coffers now you know um even without uh, getting the money we mm. we are trying to go for a holistic approach as far as the plastic waste many is his concern mm. so we again uh went out there to look for the appropriate technology okay um to help us deal with this right so we have what we called oxo biodegradable additive it, it, how 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 workable is that what does no, that mean no it, it's it's a special chemical it's an additive you add one percent to your production line for the manufacturers when we're going to produce okay we add one percent of this chemical now okay. what it does is that over a period of time mm. say 30 days or 90 days after the uh, using of the plastics it will probably go to the refuse dump or mm. elsewhere and then within that period of time it will degrade the end product from the degradation mm. will be water co2 that okay. is what comes out right so it's environmentally friendly so so you say now, that instead of plastic taking 400 years or maybe more to decompose well, it, we it will this, take weeks. Uh, it will take weeks. Also. Okay. It will take weeks. Now, do you do you feel that in the work you do, when the people collect it and they bring it, within a few days, do you see the plastic decomposing? That's what the use of that I'm technology. Not a manufacturer, no, so you are not a manufacturer. Yeah. You're a collector. Yeah. When you collect the waste and yeah. you take it to uh, the place yeah. where you the want to sell it, yeah. do you feel that it's decomposing? Yeah, because after, uh, some after putting it on for some time. I don't know, I, I, I never, because I'm not a manufacturer, okay. I don't know about the... We, we understand you, I'm not but, a manufacturer. I'm asking but, you yeah, that's from a lay person's we, point yeah, of view. Uh, let me explain to you. When you send it to the factory, and maybe one month, six months, they haven't used it, you see that the things start melting. Ah, okay. Like powder. So so that's a confirmation. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. But, but then what is the challenge? We're wrapping no, up no, the conversation yes. now. What the, was the, the challenge? The challenge here is that what we consume here in Ghana now, about 65%, I repeat, 65 percent mm -hmm. of what we use here are coming from china are you not crying wolf because no. you want us to focus on those no. of you here we are we are talking about cleaning our cities right. and our country out of plastic waste mm. and we've go all the lengths by getting ourselves taxed 10 percent we've also gone all the length to get the appropriate technology mm. to remove those that will not be able to capture for recycling. Are you being shortchanged? Do you and, think so? Uh, exactly. Are you being shortchanged? I, I, we think so. We think so. And, and, and at the end of the day, we allow 65% of what we use imported, which is not... They are watching you. Land. All the big boys watch you now. I mean, it's true. Yes. In the, tell them. Yeah, exactly. In seconds. Exactly. So please, we think that appropriate laws has to be there. Mm. Uh, we are not asking for a ban for imported goods, but then it should be also by your compliant. Thank you. You know, uh, 
Vera, you have the final word. That's your camera as well. Uh, okay. Yes. So okay. tell them. My they're father, watching. My final word is that uh, if, even though we said there's waste in Ghana, mm. uh, last year we launched sanitation uh, week or mm. uh, day. Right. Now, how can we not... You, you have uh, only 30 seconds, though. Okay. <laughs> then all what I want mm. to tell mm. government is that uh, the waste in Ghana here, we don't even have the people to go and gather for us. Okay. So why do they allow uh, Burkina, Nigeria to bring their waste okay. into Ghana? Mm. As for that one, it should be stopped. It should be stopped. Yes. Okay. I thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, Madam Vera Boama is with the Pure uh, Water Waste Collectors Association of Ghana and uh, Mr. Ebo Boche is the president for the Ghana Plastic Manufacturers Association. They are bemoaning the fact that the 10% uh, environmental excise tax that was set aside is still not being used if you are holding the money, release it. We'll be back after this break. Thank you. There's a lot of confusion in Ghana because this plastic waste <laughs> issue is real. It is. Then when you look at the gutters and the amount of plastic waste sitting in it. Yeah. I it's, mean, it's, have a yeah, it's, not, it's so it's heartbreaking. Not, it's not confusion. I, I think that we're just not committed to dealing with. But that's the confusion. Yeah, that's the confusion because no, the money is in people's pockets, no, but the people no, fail to do what they're no, supposed to do. No, the confusion is when. We do not know what to do, mm. but we okay. know what to do, and we're not doing it. Mm. Right. So this is not confusion. No, but I still stand to reason that the people who mm. own the monies, who are supposed to do a particular yeah. task, mm. are confused as to what their mandate is. Right. Otherwise, they'll well, be performing that. Look, we mm. have had the producer pay policy, mm -hmm. polluter pay policy. Uh, exactly. There's the excise, uh, environmental mm -hmm. excise tax. All the loss, everything nice. Through. Nobody. I remember back in 2015, after the June 3 disaster, and I mm. have a documentary on that. Mm. Right. President Mahama said at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle that we would take steps to mm -hmm. follow the Kigali example. Exactly. So we're going to ban plastics beyond 20 microbes. Mm -hmm. What has happened from that up to, up to this point? There have been more than 20 microbes. Then, kind of then we, had, we had people come up and say, oh, you, you spoil our business. Fine. Okay. What's the next step? Mm. No show. So, anyway, so that's the pro that, that's the problem. We know what to do, but we're not simply. We doing just don't it. want to I, do I, it. I don't think it's it's simply the fact that uh, our people we're not committed to what we say, mm. and so let's say it uh, and please the people. Right. After that, we can just go and drink our wine and champagne. And anyway, let's say happy back. birthday to the big woman at the top, yeah. Pearl Isua Mensa. She's a uh, group CEO of Media General Operators mm -hmm. of TV3. 3FM, Connect FM, Akuma FM, Odia FM, uh, 3news.com. Mm. It's her birthday today, special one. Happy birthday to you, madam. Live long, stay strong, learn to do no wrong, and, and be, and <laughs> prosper. To learn and to prosper, do, right? yeah. Yeah, I mean, so that's our boss, madam's uh, birthday. Yeah. Um, and, and she shares the birthday with... Uh, I think it's also Twins Don't Beg. Yes, Twins yes, Don't Beg, my I favorite. Two of my favorite photographers, Twins mm -hmm. Don't Beg. It's their birthday today. Happy birthday. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They always confuse me. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who is the eldest. And, yeah. You know, they look so much alike. I mean, when it comes to twins, I guess it's people who live with them and have been so close yeah. to them for many can, years who, who can, can tell. easily yeah. tell. And, and they are both something. very good photographers. Yeah. It's their birthday today. Happy birthday to them. And to uh, group CEO, Pearl Isiamensa, mm -hmm. it's your birthday today. Enjoy the fullest. We'll be coming for a piece of the cake, madam. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll come for it. Uh, but then today, Kokwa Ajinoho goes back to the CID. Mm. He's going to meet the CID. And uh, Tilapia has a nice way. It says, charge <laughs> office. Uh, this policeman is very skinny. I don't know. <laughs> this one looks aggressive. Say, you did plan cool. And then it says, Masa, history will repeat itself. La. And he has what? A bow and arrow mm -hmm. in the sheet. Mm. Okay. And uh, someone looks mm. like the Minister for Information says, Charge him for treason. One man, one machete. One man. <laughs> <laughs> one man, one arrow. <laughs> anyway. Oh, my God. So that's how the cookie crumbles. Uh, we're wrapping up the show. Grateful. And all those who made it safe <coughs> back from Jackie T. Yes, and Jackie T. And, and go. Welcome back. Yeah, we are back. Crack. We're back into the work. You will work. <laughs> you must you know, work. You will work. Don't worry. You will. <laughs> accept pa, uh, Mr. Aka, Kwati, Francis Doku, all of you who went. Uh, welcome back. You yeah, will come and work. Come and work. Yeah. <laughs> but we were here. You went. But you are back. Okay. Yeah. If it's your birthday today as well, happy yeah. birthday yeah. to you. And, and, and make the best of it. Unfortunately, mm. we do not have um, any other long period right. of uh, holidays holiday. again. Yeah. Yeah. So Christmas. Yeah. Christmas. Uh, April is no holiday month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, May has about two. Okay. May have first, AU first and, first, and first. Yeah. yeah. 
And then we'll go into June. No, no holiday. holiday. August. June. No yeah. holiday. Okay. But if Amma decides to give you sick leave, you'll be fine. Okay, that's fine. Hmm. You September has one. Only that Amma yes. doesn't September give. September has yes. Founders, Founders Day. And then we'll go Amma doesn't October, give. November. Amma doesn't no, give. No, I know. Yeah. She's, Amma, you know Amma is mean. She's know? mean, yeah. Hey, please know. speak in plain language so mm. viewers can understand. Right. Why is I don't give? What don't I give? You don't give. I share uh, everything. No. No, I give appropriate excuse look at, look one at, that I'm married to. Look at this young lady. <laughs> look at this young lady. <laughs> which one is, <laughs> which one, <laughs> which one is oh, appropriate? Don't come to us for excuse duties if you're not. Uh, anyway. If you don't need it, won't give you. But anyway, guys, have Sometimes a good day. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Stay Sometimes healthy. you just need it. <laughs> Stay healthy. Take a holiday. Take a break. You're entitled uh, to that. Uh, Why should your employer be paying for free <laughs> bonto? People, have a good we'll day. See you Stay tomorrow. Be good. <laughs> <laughs> Get confusion, so my baby forget to